Welcome to Free Agents, our cipher system RPG set within the Beacon Space universe. While the faction turn deals with the giant political organizations and factions, our game looks into the penumbra, the part of society where light and darkness meets, the shadows and the cracks, the place where clients with exacting needs can claim plausible deniability and get the things done that nobody else can. Individuals within the penumbra are the titular free agents, and a team of such will perform our mission today. Let's go down. Uh, let's start with, from the top, Whittle. I am playing Whittle Marayothel, who is an inquisitive speaker who crafts unique objects, standing at four foot, wearing dungarees, Wellington boots, and a bucket hat. And uh, yeah. ghosts of financial past, yada yada. Normal lifestyle, standard. I've been living a normal lifestyle. Well, you've all been uh, embroiled in missions on the underwater, underwater planet of Kaurikuk. Uh, a, a normal lifestyle probably looks a little different for you these days. What, where have you been living? What kind of thing have you been up to? She's probably like in her actual home. Just yeah, like, like uh, in Sage Block. Um, maybe gone to visit the family in between missions um and uh yeah the the normal underwater lifestyle um yeah very cool it's it's very normal for you yeah been nice to be in a uh submerged environment for an extended period yeah god you don't feel so dry all the time and next up we have uh someone who moves like a cat and might hate water kit hey um Kit, I'm a mechanical technician uh, who looks like a cat, as we said. Um, probably work, living like a, um, uh, a moderate lifestyle. Um, uh, probably trying to find a spot in the, the dockyards that they cleared up earlier, but kind of keep a low profile. Uh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Maybe uh, making some money on the side. Fixing yeah. engines and the like. Yeah, nice. A couple of jobs, but nothing, nothing major. Yeah. Uh, Cinch, what have you been up to? Uh, Cinch has been dealing with the fallout from her her last mission. Probably, she's a clever explorer that likes to work the system. Uh, but now she's got one more voice in her head, so it's it's been an interesting, interesting thing to explore. You know, she looks a little bit different. Her hair's like this iridescent blue purple. So if she catches herself in a mirror, she jumps and thinks someone's following her. Um, she hasn't been able to wake this up. Like, she's only talked to her once, and she's trying to figure out what happened. And moving is a little different, too. It's like, by the time she's done thinking about doing an action, she's already done it. So she's coming to yeah. terms with that one. Yeah, weird things have been happening to to the lollipop chainsaw. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, is a Theatric the Toy Storm, or the artist formerly known as Flint Westdale. Yes, I'm playing Sir Theatric the Toy Damned, also known on the mean streaks of Cardacook as a, a Flint Westdale. Uh, no relation to some 20th century actor, I promise. Uh, he is an exiled soldier of Zihi who wields two weapons at once. Because why not? It definitely, you know, it definitely works. 10 out of 10 would do again. Yeah, cool. Now, our, our muscle for the group today. And, uh, last up, but definitely not the dumbest, Bloodwin. Uh, yes, I'm playing uh, Bobbin of the She. Uh, they're an inquisitive explorer that fuses mind and machine. Um, yeah, I guess in in, in the way that uh, Flint Westeel is is the muscle. I guess uh, Bobbin is, or at least part of the uh, the <laughs> the brains behind that brawn. Definitely, um, uh, living for weird and unique experiences and. Uh, are going out of their way to get them. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> well, 
Um, so as mentioned, uh, you've all been on the homeworld of uh, the Concord Mutual Disdain. In the, in, if you look at the map, it's in 1210, the Hex, the Hela system on the home planet of Karakuk. On behalf of Handler Greek Fire, who is trying to reestablish dominance over the Penumbra on Karakuk and uh, deal with the mercantile side of the Golden Stag Revolutionary Front. And to that end, you have all received a mission today, which I will relay for the benefit of people treating the show like a podcast. Uh, the sender is Greek Fire. The subject that is clean up is a chore. And the agent and the, uh, the body says, Hey there, agents. The northern bo- block is causing me some trouble. I'm fighting uprising after uprising in the penumbra. What with this war? People think I'm elsewhere. Upstart handlers, petty gang lords like that Sarkani, whatever. I gotta make sure things are okay at home before I make trouble abroad, so to speak. Anyway, head to the Northern Block. I have a contact within law enforcement. They're investigating an illegal gambling ring in the underworld. Some guy called Tony the Fish, fixing robo racing, football, the Tarot League, of course, Quetel Coral Crash, anything you can think of. Track down Tony. Either way, sway him to my point of view or lead the law enforcement to his arrest. Thanks in advance. P.S. If you can find out who's going to win, feel free to take a bet for a little extra reward. And I think what we see is the five of you, I think, in a, in a transport terminal where you've been summoned reading this mission together. Um, what kind of reactions do we get as, uh, as the mission comes through? Well, I think it's about time we uh, got another mission. So, like, I, I like to imagine Theodric's been like, it, as far as like lifestyle goes, been and you know keeping up appearances with the various gangs that uh, he encountered last time. Yeah, you know, and so he he finally gets to drop being Flint West Steel for a moment. Yeah, you've been keeping up this uh, mercenary ganger kind of appeal for the Dock Boys' benefit. Cool. Hit kind of says out loud, even though it doesn't really mean to, like, I wonder what happened to that psychiatry. So like, it goes back to the uh, to the document. Mm. Last yes. thing he, he knew of Sarkani, he had, had a uh, sabotage, sabotage, yeah. The vessel, so don't know if they lived or not. I mean, it's possible he's alive. Uh, could be dead. Would if if is if he's going to be around? Uh, is that going to cause problems? Like, does he know you guys tried to kill him? I mean, in like, theory, no. Him. Okay. I don't know. Okay. They probably turn to to Whittle. Like, so Tony, it's Tony going to be actually a fish? Well, um, I mean, it's certainly possible there are uh, uplifted animals, uh, but um, I, mean, I, Whittle, I wouldn't know for certain. You're from here. Uh, why don't you just give me an intellect roll? Let's say difficulty four, and this is like penumbra knowledge. Okay. Yeah, you tell you, you know everything about Tony the Fish, or at least <laughs> the reputation that, that he's acquired. Yeah, Tony is of a, a porpoise slash dolphin like species that for many in the Concord is viewed to be on the edge of sentience, although some are like some cross over that line and are, are clearly people. They're a through a burgeoning species that isn't quite there. They kind of straddle the line between animal and person and uh, depends on which one you're speaking to where on that spectrum they fall but Tony the fish has been uh, particularly intelligent um, was previously part of uh, like a, a traveling nomadic show and then broke free and established this life in the underworld using his contacts from traveling around in essentially a circus 
Okay. Uh, Wetton will relay that. Um, I imagine she's probably like sipping on the Slurpee the whole time. And, yeah. Uh, like the, the it's also kind of interesting in that like normally like it's kind of bizarre seeing Whittle in like dungarees and a bucket hat and Wellingtons, but like actually looking at like the local fashion, she she looks just like a regular person here. Yeah, everyone else is the weirdo. Yeah, <laughs> and I tell you what, with that role as well, you can know that uh, Sarkani was badly hurt in an accident on the news, and uh, is currently in a hospital. Well, uh, Kitta, uh, if I recall correctly, there was a, a, a recent uh, news article uh, that, that uh, reported on uh, one Sarkani being uh, quite injured recently. Yeah, oh. intensive care, apparently. No one no. want to unplug him? <laughs> oh. no. We just, we just got to oh. ask him, does he feel lucky? Sorry, I'm, right. I'm working on a thing for this whole personality I have to keep up here. Did that come out all right? Who God. says you have to keep the personality up? Oh, you... You don't remember what happened with uh, the Doc Boys, remember? The whole, uh... But we... As long as we don't deal with them again, then... Look, then act like however you want. There's a but coming there, I'm sure. No? No. <laughs> I, I, I don't, having dealt with them, I don't see them having incredible intelligence apparatus. If you act like however you want, but they can't see you, well, how are they going to know? I mean, fair enough, I suppose. It just kind of stands back, just sucking on a lollipop beside uh, <laughs> Whittle. Yeah, it tastes vaguely of like it. It's sweet. Don't get me wrong, but there's also vaguely a savory note as you can taste the seaweed. Where do I get more of these? It's like seaweed and brown sugar. Oh, well, those are quite common. You can probably find them in most of the, the like uh, general shops or anything. Yeah. Well, not anything selling food. There is a they tend to specialize, but uh, any any good. Uh, Good city block with a good shop should probably have a couple. Yeah, like the fancier ones made. have creatures suspended within them in the middle and a little treat to crunch on at the end. <laughs> I'm sorry, my grandma came to Thailand and came back with a bag full of insect lollipops, which looked kind of like. Yeah, kind of like this. I imagine the uh, best-selling ones among Quilton are the, like, sea slug and sea snail flavours. Yeah, shrimp. Yeah. I do shrimp. Shrimp sound good. Cool. So you can all gain an XP for playing, and that represents everything you've done in the meantime and uh, growing in your capabilities as agents from existing within the Penumbra. And, uh, this is also your time. If you would like to buy anything, spend XP, um, have something that you have done in the downtime. This is your, this is your chance to to speak up and get equipment. And um, you have all been warned, uh, or at least have, or at least know this about your destination, that it is a mostly underwater part of the city. Um, you're in you're in the jet block, which is uh, a series of abandoned cell blocks. Uh, known as the Cell Block City in English. Um, yeah, and there's lots of different wings and blocks. And it's organized in a very kind of Spartan square way. And uh, you've been in the Eastern Docks, which uh, are atmosphere capable, but you're heading to the Northern Blocks, which are mostly underwater. So if anyone doesn't have equipment appropriate for being underwater, now would be the time to, uh, to buy it Just... or rent it. Just because I don't remember if we discussed this last time, um, my battle suit, which is both armor and an environment suit, would that work for underwater? Yep, as long as you got a helmet that goes along with it, which is yeah. an environment suit. So yeah, all right, I just, yeah. it'll I'm function sure. for twenty four hours. Um, 
if you spend more than a day underwater, you're going to have to spend 250 to buy new filters. So if you spend less than 24 hours, eventually the filters will clean themselves. But if you spend 24 hours in an environment suit, the filters are burnt out and need replacing from uh, filtering and keeping you alive. I'm going to spend... I'm going to buy two more thermite grenades. Sure. They have 500 each. I... I'm going to buy another backpack um, because uh, specifically when I made metal, uh, because I took the uh, one less maximum ciphers in order to be able to operate fine underwater. You did also mention that my original equipment being from Carlico is waterproof, but the equipment I've bought since then isn't. So I'm going to buy another backpack so that I have a backpack inside my backpack and the backpack inside the backpack is all the non-waterproof stuff. So I can still take out the waterproof stuff. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) uh, You spent your cipher slot so that you have all of the benefits benefits of being a quetel mechanically. You are a very capable swimmer. You are able to breathe underwater, no problem, etc, etc. Uh, yeah. Can um, I get a local Akartikuk gun and pistol? Like, just a light Akartikuk pistol and bullets? What's that? 1250? Oh, uh, you wish. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> The pistols are like a thousand, aren't they? Uh, five hundred. Most basic pistol is five hundred. Ha! So, light ranged weapon, and you'd have to buy the bullets as well for two fifty. What are the auto? What what what's a Cardacook auto pistol worth? Uh, auto pistol is a thousand. All right. Well, then fine. I will go twelve fifty and get a Cardacook auto pistol and the bullets for it. Yep, fifty ammo. 50, uh, 50 tungsten coated underwater ammo. Awesome. Imagine spending yeah. money on ammo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have two giant swords too, but. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have the cutter's blade and I have the uh, golden stag uh, captain's sword. And now yeah. I have a, set, a couple of sets of auto pistols. Is- oh. It, is using a melee weapon always might, or is it like? Oh uh, no, it's speed. Might is specifically if you're in like a grapple or a struggle. Um, it's generally going to be speed. Okay. Yeah. Um, like if you're think... clashing swords with somebody, that would definitely be might. But if you're just slicing at somebody at speed. Um. How do I spell Cardacook? K A R D A K O U K. D A D T. Damn it. Um, Thank you. How much would be, I don't know, the uh, um, Carter Cookie, an equivalent of a, a knife? A knife? Uh, I mean, do you. Uh, any knife is. There's a simple knife, which is 500. Um, there's also. I think in here somewhere, a light knife. The light knife is it. like it will break if you use it as a weapon, isn't it? Uh, it's a it's a roll to see if it'll break. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I think when when, when, I, when I say knife, I'm th- I'm going I'm going for crocodile Dundee. It's basically a machete style thing. Uh, cool. A, a machete specifically is a medium melee weapon. and It costs five hundred. Okay. I it? like that these knives cost the same as a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta wonder what's going on production side that makes that backpack so damn expensive. Yeah. <laughs> That's waterproof. Yeah, but okay, every that... backpack is 500, not just the Cardacook ones. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a magical backpack that lets you carry a bunch of stuff without encumbrance so you can stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only complaining because I'm buying my second one. Yeah. So wait, yeah. I, could I turn all of my thermite grenades and a backpack into a satchel charge? Uh, what would your intent be with a satchel charge? Well, I mean, there's only so many things you can do with a satchel charge. 
Right. I mean, mechanically, what what kind of result are you looking for? For I I mean, it's more of just me making dumb memes, but gotcha. Like, but if it comes down to it, and you do want to stick all of your grenades together and put them in a backpack, we can discuss at the time how much <laughs> damage that will escalate to. It probably, probably won't be this session, five, so yeah. I can probably just shoot you a message later. Cool, cool. Uh, you got five grenades. That's a lot of grenades. Yeah, we'll we'll talk. I'll have a look at <laughs> explosives in the book, <laughs> if needs be. I, I'm a collector of cool. various thermite grenades. <laughs> yeah, I, so, sorry, go on. Uh, Kit is going to get an environmental suit, an extra day of filters, and dry bags for his batteries and tools. Cool. Perfect. Sounds good. Uh, the breather that you have would work fine as well. Uh, just if you're gonna go into high pressure, then that would that would be an issue. Okay, um, I'll I'll drop the filters. I'll just have the environmental suit. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, in a pinch, you can probably pull out parts from your breather to to uh, extend your environment suit's life. Yeah, that makes you really sense. needed to. Um, and it's not like there's no atmosphere environments in, in the northern block. There's humans that live there. There'll be some vehicles that are atmosphere. There'll be some apartments and some housing blocks that are atmosphere. But the vast majority is flooded for underwater natives. So while this has been going on, I, I mean, this shopping took over the, the week or so since the last time you were active. And while you've been reading the mission... Um, in the background, there's been um, your transport shuttle, which has been arranged for you by Greek Fire, which has uh, two quetels stood outside it. One is um, orange in like a burnt ochre, and the other is uh, is teal red, and then a different shade of teal. Now they yeah. they've been standing in uh, uniforms that look like. Aguamalan public transport uniforms, but uh, subtly different. Where you can see the markings and notice that they're personal, personal resources provided by Greek Fire. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them comes up to you and reaches out their hand. Since she'll take it, say hey. Yeah. <clears throat> Good to meet you. Tegan Rogesh Tegan. I'm here to transport you to the northern block. Mutual friend. Excellent. Well, saves one part of the mission. Good to have you on board. We've been having trouble recently. Sarkani, Tony the Fish, it's all going to shit. Well, I, I like. I mean, like, like I said, we could just unplug. Yeah, you know, Sarkani's life support. Did that work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whittle hearing underneath the the translator because you can hear directly what Tegan <laughs> actually says is, "It's all going to terror after a, a bad curry." <laughs> it's the oh cultural my. idiom, but it doesn't <laughs> translate exactly, so no one else picks up on it. She just nods sagely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, unless anyone has anything else they'd like to do, we can all bundle onto the transport shuttle. Oh. Gonna lock my helmet in place and <laughs> yeah. step on. But the transport shuttle's atmosphere, it's not flooded yet, but it does have a, an airlock on the back that you can use when you when you arrive at the northern block. Uh, yeah, cool. So as you go in, it looks uh, very much like you've you've come to expect transport shuttles to look. It's uh, especially the atmosphere ones. It's quite bulky. It's quite square. There's um, somewhat Spartan metal benches on the sides, and um, there's informational screens that screens screens that pop down. And um, they start giving you uh, they start giving you an information role, um, advertising to you 
um, various Concord attractions and newly acquired planets. And uh, a lot of these things you'll have seen on BBTV broadcasts. They are uh, ad- advertisements from the Concord Tourist Board. Yeah, and uh, you get a, a message over you get over the intercom. You, yeah. hi agents, I'm Ehrlich Orville Oka. I'm your other pilot today. You sit back and relax. There'll be a few hours to the northern block. Take a take a look out your out your potholes. We're going to be going around some scenic routes on our way. Avoid customs. You know those taxation about representation and other such phrases. We'll be uh, heading around. We'll be heading over some night, quite beautiful ravines. Watch out for for uh, the the schools of fish that we encounter along the way. Hmm. Hold on tight. First, we'll be there shortly. And you hear the rumble as it disconnects from the northern block. And uh, yeah. yeah, stream of bubbles at the expense. Of, of the cell blocks, humans in environment suits, long fronds of seaweed waving lazily. Around the, the former prison. I think Cinch would find like the biggest window seat and just be like constantly asking, What is that? What is that? And uh, you'd hear Glitterbot chirping. Sort of underneath her is like, am I gonna uh, like? She and her answer is just like, no, you're not gonna rust. I sealed all your internal workings. Yeah, I think the biggest window is right at the back, um, kind of like a hospital door. Right in the middle of the the airlock doors is uh, two large windows, so you can make sure you're not walking out into uh, into a broken airlock. Yeah, out the back you can see the the airlock from whence you came sealing up. You can see another ship immediately moving in to take the place you previously occupied. Yeah, you can see a, a wonderful view of the rather Spartan city doing its best to become colourful again. I uh, imagine that Whittle uh, temporarily has a mild panic attack as the god rays symbolise the, uh, the loss of the crust of the planet and uh, the ocean venting into space as the sun's rays reach the ocean before <laughs> sighing as it's just like a really big ship that mo- moves its lights aside because mm-hmm. uh, sun rays in the ocean planet of God could be very bad because we're all underground here. Yes. Um, but yeah, she she like she like help she like as as Cinch is like what's that what's that we will like patiently like point out each thing and say what it is. I think Bobbin's probably watching that run of adverts you were talking about with like all the different tourist destinations and is yeah. recording all the ones that look interesting. Like taking a note of all the I could go there, I could go there, that kind of thing. Yeah, you get some for um newly conquered or newly <laughs> civilized worlds. You get a bunch for Gome, actually. You see a lot of um like winter holiday kind of adverts. Okay. Uh, um, I think Boss Boss which, be less interested there, but like picking up maybe some of the other ones. The uh, the Gome ones are you you find them often. Um, they they run shorter, and there is always like a disclaimer that's like the Concord does not endorse travel to Gome. Take reasonable precautions. <laughs> and um, you you remember from your time there that the Aguamala Syndicate currently owns Gome, but it's uh, the hot. <laughs> The hot winter destination. I get it, because winter is supposed to be cold. I, I yeah. get that joke. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> that, that Christmas episode on gum? That's all I'm saying. Anyway. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, you see uh, adverts for, for Jaika, you see adverts for the various um, locations on Karakuk. The different parts of Shetblock you haven't been to, uh, Vizgas, 
uh, Vigaz, the main jellyfish city, the, the capital of Karakuk, is uh, especially prominent. It's advertising the uh, the Karakuk Grand Prix, which is running again after the the previous one was uh, halted by an unfortunate terrorist incident. Um, <laughs> there's a local BBTV broadcast uh, anchored by a Tyrat and a Quetel talking about uh, the, the recent explorations in Sector Southeast. Yeah. Anything in particular you're looking for in the advertisements? No, it's just uh, Blogman's just making notes of all of all of the interesting places that they haven't been. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep looking for new experiences. Got it. Yeah, I think um, you're about half an hour in. And you get uh, another intercom message comes over. She goes, yep, this is Tegan. We'll be coming through with some snacks shortly, courtesy of Greek Fire. And, um, yeah, a, a little uh, table slides out from the back of the, the sealed door that leads to the pilot area. And uh, there's a tray on it with, uh, with various, various local snacks and delicacies. There's... Uh, some rye bread crackers with um, with uh, sion bread and dipping sauce, and uh, a bunch of the the cutter cook delicacies. Uh, there's obviously a medley. Yeah, you know, there's um, there's some slugs on sticks, which I imagine Whittle goes straight for. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of different snacks. There's some, you know, there's honey. There's there's all sorts. Yeah, there's a, a little spread put on for you. I'd hate to turn down free food. <laughs> I think Central grab like one of the strangest looking items that she's seen that she's never seen. She's like, "Is there something special I'm supposed to do to eat this? And what is it? As long as it's not reconstituted protein, she's good." Yeah, I think what you pick up is. Uh, I think you pick up, uh, like a little pink disc, and Whittle, you know it to be crab tata. It's crab tata. Yeah. Definitely trying that one. It'd be like a little bit sweet, almost like like. Well cooked shrimp. With yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll like pats each other back and be like, I can assure you, uh, with the uh, wide variety of foods available on Carter Cook, you won't have to worry about reconstituted protein. Be like, can I live here? It gets just it sound the food sounds so much better. And she I like just goes on. Folks, <laughs> if you take a look out of your potholes as your Eating on your snack, you'll see that we're going over the Gargaz Ravine, one of the deepest ravines around the Shetbox Slitty. It's quite beautiful. Watch out for the unique biosphere contained inside. We are only a, a short way away from the northern block, so hang on, sit back, relax, and we'll get there shortly. I think Theodric is just going to try a little bit of everything. You know? Yeah, we get like a, an anime kind of feast scene with you just chomping down on every dish available. I think Cinch is going to try the slugs because it reminds her sort of of like crater worms from home and it's just nattering to Cinch. It's like, you know, or not Cinch is nattering to Whittle. You know, I think you'd actually like visiting Kyrus. We eat a lot of bugs. Ooh, well, I'm always up for visiting somewhere new. <laughs> Yeah, just as you say that, Whittle, there's a, there's a little shake in in the shuttle. There's just a, a turbulent vibration. It kind of knocks you off your feet a little bit. Like the inertial dampers, inertial dampers are normally dealing with this, but yeah, there's, there's a there's weird like rumble that makes you all wobble a little bit. <laughs> Pilot gets on. Sorry about that. We're just encountering some unexpected turbulence. I, I'm sorry for the uh, sorry for the disturbance. I think Central will look around like she'll just kind of like freeze, 
been all of a sudden very, very aware that like they're surrounded by water in turbulence. And just kind of like gaze out the window a little bit. Yeah. As you look out the window, um, you can see underneath you um, it, about maybe, it's hard to tell from this, this maybe 200, 300 meters across. Um, a, a crack in in the uh, in the sandy ocean floor. Um, you can see just darkness all the way down, and deep down, you can see some bioluminescence flashing inside. You can see um, some jellyfish type creatures uh, blobbing up uh, around its entrance. And you can see, um, yeah, at, as promised, a, a different ecosystem to the one you've gotten used to. Supposed to be like that, she whispers to Whittle. Uh, Whittle will like look out the window uh, down to the uh, the deep dark crack and say, "Well, uh, Kardakuk has a long history and a wide variety of uh, environs and uh, creatures living on it. Um, one of which introduced by uh, the jailers back in ancient history, of course. Um, yeah, they brought all sorts of things here." Um, some of them are uh, a little less savory than others, and uh, well, uh, you wouldn't want to uh, open up a, an old cell block uh, without uh, the proper precautions. But uh, in general, yes, uh, there's a wide variety of uh, of uh, different places and uh, environs all around the planet. And uh, well, yeah, we've not been um, to all of them just yet. That's that's when the lights turn out. You you plunge into darkness, um, as just as you're saying that, like boom, all of a sudden it's pitch black in the back of the shuttle. And a few seconds you hear a clung 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 cling, and then like a a, a kind of ghastly green emergency bioluminescent strip uh, is unveiled, and um, yeah, everything's cast in like the same mono color, and. You don't feel it at first, but after a few seconds, and especially Whittle and Cinch looking out the window, you, you're going down. Whittle, think, like, like, Whittle like, takes a slip, a, 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 like a final sip of a slurpee, and then says, I think I recommend that you put your environment suits on. Like, Cinch does not have to be told twice. Like As soon as the lights went out, she probably like grabbed Whittle. Like what the hell? And uh, <laughs> she's just like hauling everything out of her bag to like find the environment suit. <laughs> I think she's the only one that didn't come with it like on. Yeah, blowing stand on the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clunk hiss as you as you snap the the air seal into place. You cinch. You you're hopping, trying to get your leg through the. <laughs> The, yeah, the bulk, pretty much. Somewhat bulky suit. Just kind of like falls over as she's like wrestling with it. <laughs> yeah. Since, oh, yeah. Since Whittle doesn't really like have to worry about an environment suit, she like kind of tries to help cinch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I'm gonna throw my helmet on and then help anyone who needs it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like, I, I fix I, your I own we'll... environment suit before helping others. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think. Seeing everybody else helping each other, Bob was going to make their way to the the door to the cabin and bang on it and and and, uh, uh, and kind of shout through the door. Um, What's going on? What happened? Yeah, you hear kind of a staticky buzz from the intercom, like like um, it was trying to engage, but nothing was coming through. And yeah, you you feel. Um, you feel yourself become somewhat weightless as the downward trajectory increases. Um, I think Glitterbot actually leaves the floor and is uh, kind of hovering a few inches above it. Uh, various uh, personal items that you might have uh, are floating in the air as you get that kind of weightless feeling. Like going in a lift downwards very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Kit, who's like who's used to putting on like uh jumpsuits and the like mm -hmm. got his uh suit on quickly and then like he's trying to find like an access panel back here like to see if he can like 
connect to the ship to see, diagnose what the problem is. Yeah, absolutely. You are you're a technician. Yeah, you okay. can fully like. Um, I'll just give it to you that you know you've you've worked on ships all your life. You know the right place to look. Yeah, you can find yeah. a, a mechanical access panel. Behind the seat, there's like a, a couple screws. Yeah, and... pull the cushion off and you find it. Yeah, sure. And I try and plug in my wrist computer and just try and like see what the if there's any warnings being sent over the system or if it's just dead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, give me a, a speed roll difficulty four. Speed roll difficulty four. Um, using my wrist computer. Mm-hmm. Oh, if this is speed, then does enable others help him? Uh, it's perception. It's, uh, okay. it's just, it would be He's intellect, just... but there's a, a time limit on this. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Well, I spend one effort uh, using one asset. Yeah, cool. Um, so you get a reading that there is very, very minimal power left in the transit shuttle. It's like something drained the batteries. And um, you can even see that they have backup liquid fuel tanks for emergency generators. And you can see that there is a temperature reading from those that is like minus hundreds of degrees to where the, the fuel has frozen solid. As in the, the fuel froze while underwater or was frozen when we set off? I don't think you know that. Um, no. Just currently the, the fuel in the backup tanks is like frozen solid. Okay. Um, yeah, anyone looking out the window still? Yep. Yeah, Whittle, it, you see what you expect to see. The shuttle is um, rapidly heading towards the ocean floor. I think um, we just see the the kind of soft green-blue light that's been coming through the windows um, goes dark as, Whittle, you see the, the shuttle fall down past the lip of the ravine. You see the bioluminescent jellyfish bobbing by as the, as the shuttle uh, falls down into the crack. Is there a way we can get into the cockpit to see what's going on and ask the, the two pilots? Sure. And you like to, is it like a dividing door, you know, kind of like on an airplane, but you can definitely like try to open it up, jiggle okay. the handle, it's locked. Okay. Uh, use a lock picking tool to try and open it? Yeah. Sure. Difficulty four. Okay. Uh... Like speed or I... intellect? Oh, sorry. Uh, intellect. Okay. Or I guess I speed if you more. want. It's up to you. Sorry, say Anything. that again. Uh, can I provide any help? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. So difficulty four base and then lock picking tools and help. So two. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I think your help is like working from it from the electronic kind of side. Like since you're physically sticking our tools in the door and you're like seeing if there's a magnetic clamp or anything like that. Oh, and I also have lock picking in and of itself, so Yes. Done. Yeah, you managed to beat difficulty one. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the door cracks are open. You see the two Gretel. Um You see uh, one of them furiously like tapping away on controls. Um, the, the one that you recognize as Ehrlich Orville Oka, um, who is uh, orange and, and Oka, um, tapping away furiously on the controls. And you see in the left hand seat, head lolling, um, the Don Quetler introduced himself as Tegan is uh, out for the count. What happened? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. We just lost power. We're going down. Brace, well, brace. What's what, what, your, your friend is unconscious or what's happening? I don't what? know. He, I don't know. They they knocked out the same second we lost power. Just going along fine. All of a sudden, boom, nothing. 
is jamming on a button on the control panel repeatedly. If we have um, no power, then do those controls do anything? I'm trying to engage the backup and restart the engines, but it's not working. I can't get the backup generators to go. Uh, Kit yells across the room. Fuel is frozen. What? I, I don't know. It's just frozen. Generating just won't work. And they scramble out of their seat. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, because I was going to say, like, can I, like, look, because I've got piloting skill, can I look at the, the, the ship and what he's doing and see if there's anything, like, suspicious he or his other friend did to, to create this problem? Sure. Uh, make a, a speed roll difficulty for okay. his perception. Okay. Uh, and so the piloting would help, and would assessing danger help? Actually, vehicle driving helps you more than piloting in this case, but okay. um, you do not have uh, no, assessing, assessing danger anymore, do you not? Oh, no, was... it was. Right. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> For the benefit of the viewer, some stuff has changed with uh, with Cinch's character since last time we saw her. Right. So would assessing danger work? Yes. All right. Okay. And... We'll work out if there's a threat. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, it seems like this is a pilot desperately trying to regain control of the vessel. I don't see anything right. particularly suspicious. Okay. Uh, they, they scramble out of their pilot seat and they, they go, get to the back, get to the back. It's the safest place when this thing hits. And um, they, the ship is now basically like people in the back. It has shifted to where um, while you, you're parallel to, to the ocean floor, it still feels like you're upright for you because of the, the artificial gravity. Um which is still working on on the very weak backup power very slightly. You're still able to be sucked to the floor only just, but um, they they break free of its grip and uh, head right up to the back airlock doors. Um, they strap themselves into a metal bench hanging on to, to a handle. Go, everyone brace. Um, once they're strapped in, uh, Kit's going to just from revert the power away from the, uh, uh, the the um, gravity, artificial gravity, mm-hmm. save on power. Yeah, 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 absolutely, you can. Um, yeah, everyone, you feel yourself go fully weightless and start to feel yourself pressed up against the the back doors, like you start drifting that way. As uh, the orientation in in your vision stops being that the floor is the floor, and instead becomes that the front of the craft is now the floor. Uh, you feel the the pull and the push. Yeah, you all scramble to uh, to brace for impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Going, I'm going to trust the the expertise of the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, can everyone please make a difficulty five speed check for me? Difficulty five, you say? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. You can see through the open cockpit tour, through the uh, the view screen of this transport shuttle, uh, rapidly approaching uh, jagged rocks. And uh, yeah, the, the speed check is as the front of the ship crunches against. Uh... Oof. Can I use balance to do this? Definitely. And my ship boots to cancel the hindrance of uh, zero gravity? Sure. Um, Clamp yourself in. Would enable others help anybody with this one, or no? It would help everybody, actually, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that is so... not a one, Theodric. That is a, a four. Uh, the assist would make me pass. Yeah. And it now I'm trying to desperately th- see if there's anything that'll help me. <laughs> you applied effort. Uh, uh... I'm going to spend an XP to re-roll that. Um, I, I assume suppose... my armor. 
I assume my armor speed cost does apply to this uh, edge of if, application. If you applied edge. effort, yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah. Uh... This is essentially a speed defense roll, yeah. So the thing is brought down to four. Actually, hold on. Yeah, no, because if it yeah. brought down to four, then I would have just met it. So I don't know how that works. Is it meets it, beats it in the system, or... or... So oh, wait, what, no, never mind, you... I'm... Never mind, I'm me, dumb. Me. I was looking at I was looking at Whittles, not mine. My bad. Oh right. Yeah, I'm yeah, still your role right. would have become a four with, with Cinch's help. And oh you applied an effort, so it would be uh, I get getaways. So I rolled a me. one, so I mean it's Yeah. Uh, but I can't apply an effort to this, so Oh Succeed. Seven help from Cinch, and then the effort that you spent before. So that's ten, thirteen. You do beat it. Oh, um, with the help from Cinch and the effort that you spent before. Right, um, I forgot that that trend. Uh, yeah, uh, when you reroll, you get to keep effort and stuff like that. Hi, have I mentioned I'm dumb? That's okay. Um, so cast passes, flutter passes, okay. shadow passes. Uh, Kit and Whittle fail. Uh, you both no, take. I I pass with the oh, assistance. You do. Right. Uh, you rolled a two plus six. So I, I'm eight. It made sure everyone else got strapped in, but trusted his ship's boots. Yeah. This oh, got thrown when he got when he landed. Yeah, you helping everyone else. Uh, Kit, you you take six damage from being like jostled around and slammed against stuff as as the ship crashes. So um. Help. Damage work on the character sheet. So it first is removed from your might pool. Okay. Then your speed pool, then your intellect pool. As okay. first your body, then your nervous system, then your mind become damaged. And the damage track, that's not dealt with. So uh, if you hit zero in a pool, you get knocked down the damage track. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So if you hit zero might, you'd become impaired, and then everything would be harder for you. Cool. Yeah. So, um, uh, recovery rolls as well. So, if you had a moment, you could try to restore those points with the uh, your one action recovery roll or ten minutes if you get a chance to sit down. So, it's not a not a huge deal. Um, yeah. Uh, as as you're all bracing in in the back of the ship, um, I think you look over, or anyone who looks over to Ehrlich, um sees the the color metaphorically drain from from the axolotl like cheeks as uh, they go oh death tegan and yeah anyone who looks down towards the front of the ship will see the, the, without going into too much detail the rock spike that is going into the seat where the other pilot was set as uh yeah, if you look down, the front of the ship is now uh, merged with the side of the the ravine wall, and uh, we see the the front half of the ship pierced in several places by spikes of rock. I assume we also see water coming in through those same holes. Yes, yeah, the ship is uh very rapidly filling up, starting from that end. Um. You're all strapped into the seats, like sat horizontal to what is the floor. Um, yeah, the water level is rising. And the pilot goes, <sighs> Right, <sighs> it's okay, we'll be okay. <sighs> oh, Depths, Tegan. Uh, um, the black box, we can get a signal out. They'll pick us up. Oh, God. <sighs> Where is the black box? Uh, God. Um, underneath my seat, uh, underneath both of our seats. Um, you mean you imagine... un- underneath the pilot seats? Yes. Yeah. I look once again at the patently missing pilot seats. <laughs> well, <laughs> you see, the left hand one has a rock spike through it, and it, it's it's damaged, but you might be able to recover something. Okay, I guess unstrap. Yeah. And are we now level again, or are we at a, at a slope? 
I mean, narratively, you can choose when you unstrap the the ship is at like um like an eighty degree angle. Like it's not directly stuck upwards; it's slightly tilted, but near enough. You know, when the water level reaches high enough, yeah, you can unstrap and like splash into the water. Okay. Yeah, and then I guess time to go diving. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of like unstraps. She's like kind of freaked out by the water and like raising her hands as it goes up. It's like, oh, you, buddy. Yeah, and bearing in mind, it's all still lit by the green bioluminescent mm-hmm. glow from the emergency yeah. lighting. Uh, it's If you tried to look out the windows, it's very dark outside. Um, if you try to like look upwards, you can see the light of shallower waters, and um, the you can just see like a strip in the sky where the uh, the the lip of the ravine is. Mm-hmm. Okay. will pull out her torch. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Click it on. Yeah. And uh, so, I, I think yeah. While everyone else is doing what they're doing, she'll try and like look around in uh in this like back compartment space to see if there's any other like portable sources of light anywhere. Yeah, I think as you're looking around, I think you find um under some seats you find uh an inflatable <laughs> life raft. Uh not a life raft, it's like uh, a life dodecahedron. That has enough space for three people and can be and has like twenty four hours of atmosphere included in it. Like it pops up into this into this ball that um has an atmosphere inside. Bright orange, you know, it's for being picked up in an emergency situation. Um you can also find alongside that um I think eight packs of food, enough for forty eight hours for three people. Okay, I think uh, yeah, Blobbin is diving to try and get to the to the uh, pilot's chairs and to see if there's if the black box is still there and if it's recoverable. Yeah, as you're diving through the water, um, the the water quality isn't great. You see, like all the stuff people dropped down behind the seats over the years floating through. You see, like crumpled up wrappers and cigarette butts and everything that you'd expect um, of a, a bus that's been submerged just floating through the water. It's kind of icky. But, um, yeah, you can dive down. And why don't you make a, a speed check for me, perception difficulty for? Um, <laughs> I imagine Kit had fallen down there. And is like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Probably grabs his flashlight and helps uh, helps him try and find it. Sure. Oh, so that brings it to three. Does my vehicle driving skill apply in that knowing where things might be in a vehicle or is that not relevant at all? Mm, I don't think you're familiar with this type of vehicle. Okay, I mean, you can tell right. me if you are, but... <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think that, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, so difficulty three... Yeah, I think we get this kind of eerie shot from uh, from the inside as we look around and everyone's like clicking on their torch and we start to see these beams of light moving mm-hmm. through the, the deep water. My flashlight work underwater? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. I totally take that out too. Yeah. Cool. yeah. It doesn't disperse in the same way as it would in air. Like you don't get a nice diffuse kind of light. You get yeah. a, a thin, narrow beam. Mm-hmm. Highlights whatever you're looking at, but you can use it. Um, Kira, yeah, you're able to find. Um, well, first you have to shift past um, a, a pierced in several places dead Quetel with uh, what color is Quetel but blood Whittle? <laughs> that is a good question. You just go with red. That, that make it easy. <laughs> whatever the color Quetel blood is, you see a cloud of it starting to emerge from the left hand seat. Uh, you see the right hand seat. Uh, Ehrlich would made the right decision in uh, getting out 
is uh, it, it is pierced in several places by rocks. Um, yeah, that picture that someone has drawn is very appropriate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as a point of interesting thing, apparently axolotls, green axolotls have fluorescent red blood, and red axolotls have green blood. <laughs> well, this is a red axolotl, so... Uh, oh, so, so green fluorescent, blood. Yeah, a cloud of fluorescent green blood. It kind of looks like um, those actual emergency rafts that have like that green dye. Yeah. Very appropriately. Yeah, cool. I imagine there's a whole rainbow of different quartal blood depending on their coloration. Probably, yeah. And diet. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> diet probably changes what your blood looks like. It's probably blood type. Yeah. yeah. Because the, I think the color of blood's based on the metal that's used in its. Because, like, iron makes it red and copper makes it green. Yeah. So. I wonder what a silicon based. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're able to identify. Um, it's not a literal black box. It's more of a, a yeah. chrome cylinder. If you're able to to pull it out, in the same way that black boxes on uh, uh, on jetliners are orange. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chrome cylinder. It has uh, blinking lights on one side. Um, it's it's like a smooth torpedo with like it's like a thermos flask. It's got a flat end with like a port on it and a blinking like power light Ooh. and uh, and a big button. Would I know? I, I don't know. Would I know enough about black boxes to know that this has triggered a beacon already? Or, and it... yeah, I think so. Yeah, I it... think from the from the flashing light, you can speculate that upon significant impact, this is already sending out a distress signal. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I swim back up to the 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 rapidly climbing surface. <laughs> yeah, I I think the last little air pocket is now, um, it's like up here. It's like people who want to have their head out of the water can, but otherwise everyone is now submerged. Cool. And yeah, I'm now holding that. <laughs> I guess being a fairly bulky thing, as I imagine, so. Holding it in two arms, treading water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about two foot long. Um, mm -hmm. It's about as wide as, you know, as a, again, like a, a big thermos flask. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, let's bring it up. So, I think as you swim upwards, there's like a trail of the iridescent green that's dripping off your uniform where you've touched yeah. it. Well, I've got this beacon, so... Yes, a metal baguette. Know. Perfect. <laughs> I'll wait for it to go stale and I'll use it as a weapon. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've retrieved the beacon. Uh, did we want to stay in the vehicle with the beacon? Or is it yeah. better to get outside and go and try and Get up higher. Alex speaks up. Like, I, I don't know how long it'll take for them to reach us down here, but it looks around. You know, it's, I, you'll be all right, but I, I worry about our more, our, our less water-suited party members here. I, I don't know. We should try find some shelter. It's thinking about like the immense pressure of all yeah. the of us. Hmm. There's definitely like a, a creaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm like Sinjus is like yeah no I'm I'm good for for listening to the the, the experts here. Yes, I think, like our, heads I think that's our. I think that's our around. It's your it's your planet. You know what to do. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we... I am also concerned about what might live down here. Is is this uh, uh, crevice not uh, well studied, or is that the problem? It's very well studied. 
little of column A, little of column B. It's <laughs> just kind of like immediately pulls out like one of her swords. We know well, just enough to know like... how little we know. <laughs> and like, it all depends, really, doesn't it? I mean, best case scenario, help arrives quickly, yada yada. Uh, we find shelves to not far from here and everything's good. Worst case scenario, there's an unopened cell block down here. And uh, that would be very bad indeed. On top of the cutter's blade, Cinch also takes <laughs> her new gun. She's okay. like standing there horrified. Theodric will drop both swords. <laughs> I'm not sure the weapons are going to help us get outside of the uh, vessel. No, yeah, but there's, something there's out like there. a creek, and then um, you'll get shook a little bit as as the ship like settles into its uh, new position. So, if we wanted to get out of the vessel. Um, I imagine the, door. the doors aren't working. <laughs> Cinch size puts the gun away and pulls out the lock to lock pick tools again. It's like maybe these will help. I mean, yeah, I do but... have a few thermite grenades. Well, thermite would thermite does burn underwater. It does, and that's yes. why I got them. Would it uh, uh, perhaps? Not be advised- to not do that whilst we're still in the vehicle. That is uh, a wise uh, thought. Perhaps maybe yeah. something slightly more... Uh, whittle and kit, with a little tinkering, Yeah, you, you probably have enough technical skill to be able to turn a thermite grenade into a slower burn so it's not so explosive as it is. Uh, I have, like, cutting... I'm not sure I want to be anywhere near the molten alu- aluminium that comes out as a result either, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got a, a variety of mechanical tools. Um, yeah. Not saying I have a blowtorch, but could I like roll to see if I'm, I'm prepared to have a blowtorch? Uh, I, I'd let you like <laughs> slowly take off a side panel. Like a full, <laughs> just the whole section. You had enough time. Um, but if you want to have a blowtorch, we can roll for that, sure. Um, just let's just roll a d twenty and eleven plus. You have a blowtorch. Well, uh, I do have bags of both light and heavy tools, so same. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah, you don't <laughs> have a blowtorch, but you you all have enough tools to be able to work your way out of this, I think. I think everyone is carrying at least one set of tools to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I'll make you roll just with enough time you can eventually like take a door off or something. Yeah, I think that's fine. Removing the door is, I think, what the plan was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we a gun and slowly remove every single rivet. Yeah, we get like uh, a really frustrating montage as you, you all slowly take out one bolt at a time, and eventually, yeah, one of the one of the airlock doors drifts off, and um, I, it gets passed I... down the vehicle. And Ehrlich grabs it, shoves it down, it sinks towards the pilot's compartment. I guess our air bubble disappears at the same time. Yes, yeah, like a bloop, and you see it go up to the surface. And uh, as you look up the airlock door off, you can see above you uh, the, the the darkness, and then the strip of uh, of lighter um, lighter what? <laughs> yep, exactly. The strip of lighter uh, coloration indicating the entrance to the ravine, and you can see shadows passing across it. Those shadows look. Closer than the edge of the ravine? Oh, they're, they're definitely in the ravine with you, yeah. Uh, Who can, was it that can... found the uh, safety dodecahedron or whatever it was called? <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Do we want to deploy that and ride it up or use it as a shelter? Or do we want to find a hole in the wa- hole in the wall of the ravine to use? Well, you know what? As you say that, as you look around, there is a hole in the wall. 
looks kind of like you know a cave entrance. It's a few meters tall, and uh, it's wider than it is tall. Maybe four meters across, two meters high. Is do we there... want to do we want to go into the uh, heavily convenient cave? <laughs> <laughs> is there uh, anything remaining from the provided uh, food? Yeah, I mean, none of it spoils underwater. Exactly <laughs> what I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all, yeah, it's all underwater compatible. So the little spread that was put on you, this whole time, you've had like snack food floating through the air along with, yeah. You know. <laughs> so we'll kind of collect all that up as well. Yeah, cool. You've got um, eight MREs, essentially. And then, um, yeah, a handful of collected snakes. Then she's probably, like, kind of looks up towards the slit in the shadows. Is like, there a reason we can't, like, swim up there? The things that are swimming around between us and there. They look big. Oh. Yeah, some of them like meander across like jellyfish, and some big shadows dart across. I think like the, uh, Glitterbot clicks and just like. <laughs> yeah, um, what were you saying, Whittle? I was going to say uh, uh, the uh, thing with the do decahedron is. I think that's a uh, potentially our. Uh, our uh, emergency plan if, uh, say, an environment suit breaks or we're stuck down long enough that uh, you start to run out of air in them. Makes sense. Um, so, cave it is then? Um, when you were talking about unopened cell blocks, uh, would they be likely to be found in caves like this? Oh, they'd be all over the place. Who knows what the Janers were thinking? Yeah, you hear through the water, you feel more than hear. uh, Move. Let's go. It sounds almost like a somewhat deeper whale cry. (laughs) Yeah, I I guess we... We, if you look we, we down, do the running for the cave. <laughs> if you look down, you still can't see the bottom of the ravine. You can see the top, you can't see the bottom. Like, if you look down, it's just blackness beneath your feet. <laughs> I was pretty sure so just just like on her back, so she can't see doing like this underwater, very awkward backstroke. <laughs> Towards the cave. It's like, nope, don't want to look down, not looking down, not looking down, not looking down. <laughs> I imagine yeah. uh, both Whittle and uh, the other pilot have to, like, kind of help help pull people along. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We- Especially the less capable swimmers. Yeah, you pull them across. <laughs> to be fair, even fully capable swimmers aren't necessarily capable of swimming under high pressure. In a, in a, yeah, in, in a suit. It's hard going as well because you you the only light that we see is very sometimes like fireflies. You see little like bioluminescent krill around you flash sometimes. We see like up in the darkness sometimes like bioluminescent fish or jellyfish or um whatever swimming across. Yeah, the the only light that we get is the beams from various people's torches. And um I think the environment suits as well, like inside the helmets have little LEDs that like shine um a colored light on your face, say red for sake of drama. You see everyone's faces lit up in uh, this red light. We get a click as um you all go onto like an internal network so you can speak to each other underwater, which I assume, you know, you did. Yeah. yeah, and anyone with like a fancy environment suit has like all of their team members' faces in like an AR display, you know, <laughs> like in in a grid in the top left of their vision, they can see yeah uh, each other's faces in the suits. Anyone with a less fancy environment suit just has a glass dome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
the, the fancy environments you also have like o- everyone's oxygen levels listed yeah uh, exactly exactly uh flint westiel your environment suit also includes uh, an ammo counter for everybody but for everybody <laughs> but you it says error <laughs> Uh, and for and for Flint Westfield, it says two swords. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sword icon. Is uh, it's intended for use with your battle brothers, but but these are not. Actually, you might get Bloodwind's ammo count. I don't know. It's up to Bloodwind. I think, yeah, I, I think you do. Like you, like, I think you would. But Bloodwind is like gone. All of my guns are useless underwater, so it hasn't bothered to attach them. Yeah. Yeah, you get more information it's about Bloodwind. It's just flashing error on the ammo count. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow Bloodwood has made it so that he's telling you that they've got a machete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You swim across to this um this kind of cave entrance. You see it's actually quite shallow when you get there. And uh, it's only like about a, a meter, maybe a meter and a half deep, and then it it's concrete wall. And then what is clearly a doorway. Um, you can see that uh, like coral and rock and living organisms have built up upon this structure over time to make it look like this natural rock face. But um, yeah, there's a the sheer wall, sheer grey concrete wall. Well, um, if I was imagining anything when you described uh, unopened cells. Uh, that was prob- this is probably it. So, so, so what kind of things are, are in there? <laughs> like, just well, uh, slowly reaching for like, the gun again. Well, <laughs> let, let me put it this way. Um, the jailers disappeared millennia ago, and anything inside a cell block has either been alive since they've disappeared or grown and populated in the time since uh, and so anything that has been alive that long tends to be very angry and very dangerous well adapted for where they're in indeed well adapted for the place where we are definitely not adapted just another day working for the Penumbra. Yeah, uh, I think Ehrlich, um, not hesitating, I think swims through the doorway. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> Did he just go into the monster hole? <laughs> yes. I mean, just... the alternative is the monster hole or the monster, uh, you know, crevasse. So... Yeah. Uh, I imagine the the things that can be inside that door would probably be smaller than the things out here. Hopefully. Yeah. uh, Uh. Ehrlich shouts back and it's weird. You're kind of hearing it through the water and through the air and through your communicator. Um, It's like weird and echoey. He comes back and goes, it's safe in here. And Blobbin uh, uh, turns to uh, Sir Theodric and uh, says, uh, I wonder if this would uh, count as a quest. <laughs> and swims after the uh, the quettle. <laughs> Theodric is, is just going to say, like, instinctively just go, I, I think at this point, yes, and it's one of those quests that always ends up with one or two survivors. And he will follow behind uh, Bloodwind. Yeah. As you come through the door, um, you're you're fully submerged for a bit. And then, like passing through a waterfall, suddenly the water is like waist height. I mean, it's higher on some people than others, but for (laughs) Kit, Bloodwind, and Theodric, it's waist height. Um, And yeah, there's. uh, It's. Water dripping from the roof. Um, there's seaweed fronds like coming up through the the tiled floor and through the cracked roof. Um, oh, there we go. You should all be able to see. Yeah. 
Um, you <laughs> enter into into a small chamber, and Ehrlich is stood there, like waist height in the water, looking around, quite confused, and goes, um, "Well, we're worried about oxygen. I think this is breathable." Uh, is there a like over here? Is there just a place where it looks like a wall of water? Yes. Yeah, around this doorway. It, it's just, yeah. Whittle is probably still just like hanging around just before <laughs> the water the water <laughs> drops out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it it looks is... like in Minecraft, you know? <laughs> when, when, yeah. when you put some signs. Physics is broken, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is fascinating. Can I, can I see like a device that's predicting a force field or something, or is this just purely weirdness as far as I can yeah, tell? Yeah, it, it, it's purely weirdness. There's no like electronic hum, and if there was, this has been down here hundreds of years, it'd have to be one hell of a battery. I mean, it could, it could be a generator could, that they someone yeah. turned on recently. Could be like a nuclear power cell as well that lasts thousands of years. Um, yeah, no, it just just appears weird. Um, I don't know if I have any way of testing the air quality. Uh, got a scanner. Would that work? Kind of pull out the scanner and see if it's like breathable for people. Uh, sure. Give me uh, intellect check difficulty three. <laughs> And it brings it down to two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so it, it reads as a breathable oxygen nitrogen atmosphere, but very, very thin. Like comparatively, like on top of a mountain where people are taking hits from oxygen tanks from time to time thin. Um like if you I mean, no one has, but uh, speculating from scanning, if someone took off like their environment suit helmet, they would be like gasping for breath. Like they could breathe it, but it wouldn't be particularly pleasant. <laughs> just a function. It's there, but there's just not enough of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I share that, and it's like, you know, worst case scenario, if we have to take our suits off, we can but is i mean it, for now if the if the outside air is breathable it's just there's not a lot of it is it possible to will the filters last longer in that situation definitely yeah cool yeah yeah like your suit can reclaim some oxygen from the outside yeah and in a pinch you could like uh, take your helmet off, gasp for a while while the filters recuperate. Cool. Um, it's like yeah. going between that. using your headphones and charging your phone when you're on like 5%, you know, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we're not gonna die from lack of oxygen, so let's hope nothing else can kill us here. Whittle is like, constantly like, look, like looking inside and then outside and like looking around uh, 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 like where they came from and like she's like got her torch out and is like inspecting around where the door is like trying to make absolute certain that like it's not gonna close or anything <laughs> like that because like not like Whittle's been on like several missions and most of the time she's like pretty unflappable and like she she like acknowledges danger but isn't like too afraid to face it but like now she's like fighting against the communal dread of her species yeah uh with you look back to where you came and i think just as you look back um everyone you feel again vibration in the water and Whittle, you see the craft that you came from crumple against the rocks and fall away down deep into the ravine following the the faint bioluminescent light until it's swallowed by the inky blackness of the ravine down below. Whittle, like, almost doesn't react in that, like, 
in some ways she still thinks that might be better than going inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cinch is watching like Whittle's reaction and still just like get, like getting more and more nervous. It's just like I think she's not scared Bob... of anything and she's scared of this place, guys. Yeah, I think Bobbin's doing the he's doing he's doing justice to their inability with uh, awareness. And he's instead just deciding to have a look around the room. Yeah. It, you look, it's very spartan. It's like cracked concrete walls, uh, water dripping from, from the ceiling. Um, it, it's, as you see on the map, kind of a, a medium-sized room with uh, cracked underfloor tile. Um, I mean, you're sloshing around again in like, waist-deep water, so the going is quite slow. And uh, occasionally you'll feel like did something just grab my leg and it's seaweed? Um, there's some ocean life here. Like you see uh, sea anemones, you know, and yeah. um, it's like a, a big rock pool, really. Maybe a crab or two. Yeah. I, I, I guess Bodden kind of looks around the room, notices that everything else is fairly boring, and then I look down this corridor without like actually going down it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and show me on the map about where you stood. But I'm deliberately standing like far away, so something's right around the corner. It doesn't oh, grab okay. me. And yeah, then looking cool. down the. So I will reveal some, but not all. Uh, yeah, you're able to see somewhat down the corridor. You notice that it slopes downwards, and yeah. around here, around like here, um, the water level. Is like above your head again. Like there's a pocket of water, but it, it slopes downwards. Okay. Well, I imagine that goes deeper and would eventually lead to an unopened cells and such. But as long as we stick around here and Pay attention to this, and I put I uh, put the beacon down on the floor. Okay, well, does the beacon float? Is the, that's the question I have. It, it floats. Um, there is the the large button on the side that you haven't uh, touched yet. I mean, Would I know what that button does? Here. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you know what it does. No. I think Whittle would know what it does, and probably Kit. Yeah, what would it do? <laughs> yeah, it it just it like deploys the beak and it has like legs that pop out and then like a miniature dish that that will pop out as well just to amplify the range of it yeah you're supposed uh, to like find a, a secure place stabilize it with the legs and then have the dish give out like a constant signal yeah i, I relay that to bloodwind like, mm -hmm. i guess well i imagine this is the most stable place we're going to get to. Yeah, probably put some rocks at the bottom so it doesn't get jostled by the waves. Yeah, and then I guess Bobbin pushes the button and attempts to stand it up in the middle of the room. Yeah, six kind of like crab-like, claw-like legs pop out, and then um, the the side that had the button slowly, like irises open, like uh like uh like the iris on Stargate, it like whoop, like spins open mm -hmm. and um the the blades fan out into like a, a conical dish. Yeah, like that. Um yeah, like the little antenna starts going bing 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 bing. Bing 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 bing. <laughs> bing 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 bing. Like chirping every few seconds. So as effective as that is, that might get annoying. Bing 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 bing. Me, 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 me. <laughs> is it possible to mute the dinging? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you can look around and try to find, like, yeah, you find like a little speaker. <laughs> I would like to, I would like to find the aux port and plug it in, uh, plug a wire into it, but nothing on the other end. So, uh, I mean, the, the dinging is supposed to alert emergency services when they're looking for it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, you're able to turn <laughs> off the emergency alarm if you want. It tries to explain why it's ringing. Um, 
Bloodwind can be a receptive, but not too bad. Maybe a bit. Uh, uh, what, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> it will still project, but when they actually get close, it won't be able to find it because it's without the sound. Well, we know they're not going to show up for a few hours yet. I'll turn it on later when we're not going to be annoyed by it. If we're still conscious. Uh, yeah, Whittle, in your examination of the door, there is no mechanism by which this thing could be shut. There's no gears, there's no convenient sliding metal, there's no, like, yeah, there's no way for, for the door to be shut from your examination. Uh, Whittle will begin looking around to see if there's any, like, piece of metal or something like that so she can jab it in the door just in case anyway. <laughs> There's, uh, there's a two foot long kind of cylindrical um, object. It's got like a dish and some crab legs. Um, that could, this piece of metal, it could jam it. Um, you know, given that her highest pool is intellect, I think she's not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I, this, I mean, for sake of story, there can be a convenient, I don't know, Broken metal bar from a from a cell block window that you can find. Sure. Yeah, she's just gonna jab that in the doorway. No yeah, idea like if that will actually work because it's just like an open door and there's nothing to like jab it into. But she's gonna she's yeah. just gonna put it there anyway. Just give me a, give me a flat might check. We we'll see how with how much strength you're able to ram it into place. Makes cool. sense. Sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it it scrapes against the sides of the door, and some some rock uh, floats floats lazily. And then she'll tentatively step in. Yeah, cool. Yeah, as you step through Whittle, you have to adjust to your head no longer being underwater. Your hearing switches, switches over. over. Um, yeah, you can hear the rush of the the wall of water behind you. I imagine so, that actually the best given the like given the okay. like um 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 thin air, she kinda like ducks down so her head's like half in the water. So she hmm. can like breathe through the water instead. Like a hippo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just the the two globes of your black eyes sticking up <laughs> over the water. Dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. do we know what happened that made the transport die effectively? No. Is it possible that we triggered some sort of the hence unknown jailer security system, or... Well... Oh. It's something that's drained all the power from the electric systems and from the reaction of our pilot friend here froze the fuel in the tank. It's yeah. just like looking around this corner as everybody's like jabbering. Yeah. Uh, so you can see what Bloodwin saw before and you can also see um the air pocket diminishes just as you get to this bit and it like opens up. Like that here is where your head is on oh sorry. Here is where your head is underwater. And then here is when like the air pocket disappears completely. Just as you go into like this next room, you can just about see that it opens up. So Whittle, based on what you know, does this look like one of those uh one of those cell blocks? It's uh, certainly possible. Um, we uh, do our best not to... Uh, well, they look a lot like... Well, it depends, you know, there's... It depends on the security of what the jail was. I mean, if you if you remember Sage Block, most of that is made from old cell blocks, but... Um, more general population. Um, I suppose if it's a uh, 
higher security one, then uh, it might look different. Um, which uh, that is even worse for our our chances if it is. But um, yes. Here's, it just kind of looks from like the corner. Is like you 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 know how to to really make us safe here right now. <laughs> Can everybody make a difficulty seven speed check for me, please? Difficulty seven. Yep. And this Great. is perception. Would you say it is a noticing date? Definitely. Hell yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, so difficulty six for me. Difficulty eight. <laughs> Uh, you could not get a 24 on the 20-sided dice, unfortunately. Oh, it, oh it, yeah. Oh. I assume my my inability and awareness would apply to make this difficulty 8 yep. for me as well. Or <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> spend two efforts. Yay, let's send the people who can't see shit when they're in the middle dun, of it. Dun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, as you look around, Ehrlich is gone. Oh, did he run off to? <laughs> uh, who got the highest there? Uh, Bloodwin? Bloodwin and Whittle, both, oh, 15. 15, uh, 16, 16. Uh, Cass and Flutter. Um, you both see a rush of bubbles where Ehrlich used to be. <laughs> I think, like, Finch is just, like, gun out, pointed, flashlight on top. Sword. Swords are out. Yeah. And this is where we go to break. You're a bastard. Fuck we'll, you. We'll come back. <laughs> we'll come back uh, top of the hour. <laughs> Welcome to Beacon Space Today. I'm Xavier Stordes with a special morning edition of our show broadcasting live from Puluhan. Well, at least you are. I, Lupus Kalbrecht, am still remaining in my studio apartment for the time being. Our top story tonight, assembled Commonwealth trading stock in defunct company <laughs> Samegoth has been halted. We are your We are your We are your the Golden Stag, Stag Revolutionary revolution Front have happily associated themselves with the They would see, see us separated, isolated, alone, and to reach their ends, they will use any means. We are not innocent, but in this war, we are not your enemy. Like, like you, you we, we come, come from, from cultures of many. We, we, we will not see that change. change. If, if, if you, you cannot, cannot we, will we will not join, join us in this fight. We, we simply ask, ask, you do not stand in our way. We, we, we are the Penumbra. We, we fight in the shadows. We, we, we will win this war. Uh, thank you, production. Great. It it seems like maybe maybe we're back. Okay, yep. Yep, thank you. Okay, great. We've taken care of that. Uh, hello, everyone. My sincerest apologies for that interruption. It appears a jukebox that I uh, brought with me to Puluhan from the Cacti Oasis Bar and Casino managed to hijack our transmission signal on the broadcast feed for a minute there. I assure you the BBTV is in no way responsible for the content of that messaging, and we will look to strongly prosecute the individuals responsible for such a transmission. Remember, kids at home, never introduce an unfamiliar device into your home computer system network. A lesson a sector-spanning BBTV anchor should certainly have learned by now. Anyway, <laughs> our, our top story tonight is... Uh, no, I, I don't like that one. I'm going off script. Tonight, our top story is going to be relayed by Charles and Zamina for BBTV. Carter Cook, has the fabled Hollow Queen been discovered in a newly opened cell block? Keep watching to find out. Ahem. Well, 
uh, with following that last minute change to our top story this evening, or this morning actually, we also bring you a new report from the Children of the Vase, Trey Grin, providing a compelling update on the TELUS Office of Immigration, along with other updates from the Vane sphere of influence. The Aguamala Syndicate continues its expansion into sector northwest with negotiations underway for control of the planet that has been designated K by the TTGI Exploration Committee. In sector map updates, please ensure your destinations for Planet Q have been updated to Quetzalcoatl as the planet is now being branded as an adventure paradise with a jungle being an ideal location. And some unfortunate, horrific news in the past week. The BBTV affiliate stations covering the developments of brewing conflict within the assembled Commonwealth have produced a new report covering more details of the aftermath of the explosion that was first reported last week. We'll get to the story later in our broadcast. In further exploration news this month, rumors and snippets of internal to horror fire reports have come to light regarding the exploration of a planet designated N. We'll hear an internal crew record in mere moments. The first of two joint diplomatic announcements come from the Children of the Vein and the Concord of Mutual Disdain, the latter of which has been a recent newcomer to the select sector political game, and they seem to have secured a positive relationship boost with the Vein. What will the future of this relationship hold? Only time will tell. Secondly, in diplomatic announcements, trade negotiations between the assembled Commonwealth and Tahorify have come to an amicable conclusion with the promise of increased prosperity for all. We will be bringing you their full public announcement issued by the Six of Commerce, Vola Hayden. And our last feature report this month comes from The Ascent, with the release of an all-new Icarosian Courier plushie. This cute and adorable plush inspires all Icarosians to become male courier experts. Without them, secure sector communications would be slower than molasses. We'll be right back with more news on Beacon Broadcast tonight, after a word from our sponsor, MOSFET. MOSFET, designer jeans and parts, announced its grand opening this cycle, with a chain of new clinics opening in urban centers across the planet. MOSFET is the brainchild of vain athlete and celebrity Howling Star, who rose to fame as a gladiator and social media darling, advocating for biomodification and organic positivity. As a lover of Mossy culture, looking to branch out her media empire and plant new roots, Howling Star found eager investors among the Combine, and now her dream has borne fruit. MOSFET is happy to offer the people of Moss a new venture for organic bottomification services and advanced biocosmetics, ranging from genetic enhancements to cosmetic alterations and everything in between. Come in for a Witch Miss Holiday consultation for 10% off your first limb. MOSFET Designer Jeans and Parts. Find your best fit only on Moss. So uh, we come back and the, the shot we see, I think, is a frightened cinch pointing your flashlight at the space where Ehrlich used to be with your, your gun out and ready. I think, like, very quickly, she's, like, like pointing it down into the water because it's just, like... I don't see clouds of blood. I don't see like I. We just see bubbles. Yeah. Like what? 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 Can I whip out my scanner and see if he's still in the room or find like any other life signs? Sure. No. Just make a make a scanning roll. No difficulty. Uh, dif- uh speed. Oh! Ow! Wow. Gain an XP. Gotcha. Yeah. You can give an XP to to anybody else that you'd like. Uh I think Whittle could like she catches up to Bloodwin with that one, right? Yep. Sure. That's that. There we uh, go. I I think you pull out your scanner and uh you, you go to turn it on <laughs> and instead you get a little puff. Of uh, of smoke rising through the thin atmosphere, and if you turn it over, I think if you open it up, there's uh, some missing gears, and a note that says, uh, "I O U Glitterbot X O X O." Like literally, gave like glares at him. Like really, really. 
you know, gets about like... shrugs. <laughs> just like beeps away. I'm like, <laughs> I like how Glitterbot has done that in the last like five minutes because this is the same scanner that was just used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's water damage as well as the other way I was going to go with it, but, <laughs> but your, scan- like, is... your scanner broken. <laughs> Either way. Uh, I'll probably huck it at Kit and see if he can fix that one for later for me. Because it might come in handy. Uh, okay. <laughs> see what I can do. I just Thank you. Again, see if that fixes it. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Kit, yeah, the, there's no way the scanner is written off uh, since you can remove it from your equipment list. Ouch! Yeah. Damn it. Rude. Very angry deleting. <laughs> <laughs> and how does it make you feel? Yeah. <sighs> like it's going to cost me like $500 to get another one. That's how it makes me feel. Yeah. <laughs> I could repair it for like four ninety five. Uh, like, <laughs> I will take that if our Mister GM will allow it. I will take five <laughs> five owl savings. Uh, you you all hear again the from outside. You hear the. I think um, from this direction. Um, Whittle, you're the only one to hear a, a supersonic scream that sounds like a Quetel in distress. Well, uh, I think we've just found our missing person. We did? Oh. I heard a scream. Where did uh. it come from? Uh, Whittle will point in the direction that the player did not see. <laughs> Down. Uh, yeah, she she points down. Yeah. Well, that's underwater. Well, do we do we know what could possibly have caused them to go down that passage? I I, I don't think it was by his choice or their choice. His is correct. Then are we sure we want to get much closer to it? I mean, I don't think we really have an option. You know, like, is he? Does he? Did his scream make him sound dead already? Well, I think the issue is not that if we don't know what caused it, the chances it raises the chances that uh, it will happen to another one of us. True. <sighs> Since we'll uh, probably like literally kick Glitterbot in front of her to lead the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let That's me wonderful. let me grab uh, Glitterbot as a token for you. <laughs> Hang on, let me grab you naughty uh, Glitterbot. You now get punished by being the one to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> like, broke my damn scanner. Go. <laughs> where, where did I put Glitterbot? Somewhere around here. Uh. I'll just grab a new one from the robot pack. Hang on. Here we go. It's going to be big. Yeah. Can he stay big? No. (laughs) Nice nice small. Nice big, like six foot tall, level six, you know? Yeah. Uh, Kick him down the corridor. (laughs) Yeah, she's just like, you lead. And she just kind of like follows with the light bulb, the flashlight, and the gun out. Sure. Uh, Glitter is full. Glitterbot's fully underwater this whole time. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Feel free to place yourselves on the map where you are as you move down this corridor. I will be I immediately would, behind I, Glitterbot. I would like to use my one action recovery. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you've had 10 minutes if anybody wants to use a 10 minute one. Yeah. yeah I'll use a 10 minute one instead then. But yeah. I will. Yeah, that's fine. I used you one. don't have to re roll. That's fine. Yeah, I'll use I the will. 10 minute one. Yes, yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, Flutter, you should now be able to control with a bot. Yep, excellent. Yeah, cool. And he's just uh, like grumpily, like clicking behind him, leading away. Near <laughs> like little bubbles and bloops from underwater. I'm just gonna quickly check this area. Sure. Just 
staying behind. <laughs> Not- it, it, turns, it turns out it's a shrine to Cthulhu. Oh my god. What, what's a Cthulhu? <laughs> the high toll always... We don't have those here. The reveal tool always hides the first time I click it. I don't know how. It's the ancestor of the turret. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, he's going to follow the rest, but just wanted to know what was roughly sure. in that area. Yeah. It goes down further than, than your torch beam can see. Actually, question. Yeah. Could, could I use my Dark Sight monocle here? You definitely could. <laughs> Type D6, five times cipher level dark vision. Is that like a, a jeweler's loop that you just put on the outside of your <laughs> space suit? P- pretty much, yeah. So. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's a proportionally sized monocle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's magnetically attached to the outside. Of the exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Yeah. Where did you uh, find that, by the way? Uh, I, I got it last episode. Or last episode I was on. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Because... Yeah, because yeah, it replaced uh, the Valkai yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, I remember you getting it. I just couldn't remember exactly what the context was. So, so if you roll it, that will be how many hours you have uh, Dark Sight for. So uh, roll uh, a 1d6. Boom. Yeah. Six hours of dark side. Yeah. So you you put that over and then um it's more than like thermal vision. Um just one of your eyes can see perfectly underwater as if it was a bright sunny day. Yeah, I'm just gonna close the other one to have full yeah. full vision. Can, yeah. For you it kind of changes the mood of the place. It turns from like this dank underwater seaweed covered space to just being like kind of a normal room it kind of takes some of the uh the apprehension out of it for you ah much better yeah you can see clearly where your feet are stepping like you'd have to to worry i'm just picturing the uh the 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 the, the change in camera shot as it pulls behind the theatrics head and (laughs) yeah it's like it's like me it's like the uh meet the pyro Yes. Where yeah, exactly. Like Pirate exactly. point of view versus everyone else's yeah, point of view. Exactly. So you all move down the corridor. Yeah. 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 So Theodric, your head goes under the water. Um, can everyone make a difficulty five speed check for me, please? This is uh, noticing danger. Uh, I'm going to use a an experience. Um, actually. An experience, or not an experience, an effort. Oh, an effort, yeah. Cool. You know what I'm. You know what I mean. Yeah. Fail, fail. Success, fail, fail. <laughs> okay, so um, I, everyone I... but Cinch. Uh, Cinch, um, you notice running down the side. Actually, you would get. Does Glitterbot get a uh, check? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> uh, you would get another effort from being able to see so clearly in, in the dark, I think, Cass. So you would... Um... Uh, oh, you put your difficulty as three, Cinch. Yeah, because I have assessing danger. So it makes it difficulty four. You said it was difficulty four base. Five. I no, five. five. He said five. Yeah, I did say Fine. five. Fine, I will apply an effort then and make a difficulty three. Retroactively? Why not? Mm. Fine, I'll re-roll. Still applying a thing. Uh, so that would have been three, which would have been nine. So I would have succeeded then. Yeah, you would have succeeded. Ooh, sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't think you are, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, Theodric, <laughs> you hear a soft click, and you're suddenly very aware of periodically spaced geometric holes either side of the corridor. I'm gonna put an arm out with uh, the Najan saber to like stop the rest of them. Yeah, so 
in front of you, above Glitterbot's head, um, two spears fire across the corridor. Like, Probably. May, maybe a foot long, like out of a spear gun. They they fire like left to right and right to left. Two just go whoosh as Glitterbot goes past that, that threshold. Feeling very Ziegler in here all of a sudden. Oh. Don't be silly. Now, there's, not, there's not, not enough three foot rubber missiles. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough, I suppose. All right, then. Uh, now, do, so, do, do I have any indication if that's going to fire again when I pass? Or. I don't think you do. All right. I think Crash I down, will. Crash down, I'm, poke I'm... it with a sword. Yeah, I mean, you know exactly where the holes are. So I'm going to crawl on my belly yeah, under I mean, them. You're underwater, like just... so you can like swim and adjust your, your level fairly fairly trivially trivially trivially. Trivially, yeah. Words um, are hard. Compared <laughs> to in air where you'd be crouching along, you can, you know, fully go fully horizontal and swim underneath the level. And yeah, as you swim across it, whoosh again, a pair of spheres. Spheres, spears, and this time the directions that were they were going is swapped, and you can see that one spear fires into a paired hole on the other side. They're slightly offset. And each time it goes past, they're just swapping which uh, which hole they're in. Oh, but I'm a little there. impressed. Well, if I have since the Glitterbot can just get pa- past it, uh, yeah. Central probably like dive down and follow uh, his lead swimming. Yeah, swimming low mm-hmm. as best oh. she can. Yeah, I'm assuming I've... everybody avoids the trap. <laughs> Real quick, because I have used the cipher, do I just now delete it from my page? Yeah. All right. Uh, you... There's a little <laughs> box. Yeah, I... yeah. Check used, and then leave it crossed out. Yeah, uh, I I just deleted it off of my sheet entirely. Oh, that's fine. No, no um, huge deal. I apparently am carrying around a random lump of alloy from Telus. <laughs> yes, as a I hold that in the way of the ja- of one of the javelins as it's being shot across. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, I want to then grab the javelin and take a look at it. Just yeah, to see if climb. Anything. Um. Yeah, it's uh. Made of some lightweight material, about a foot long. It's shaped like a javelin. It's pointed on either end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually we got blunted by running into a random piece of metal that I held in front of it. Yeah, it looks like a toothpick after it's been used a little bit. Okay. Yeah, just clang. Given that uh, it seems to be like triggered from some sort of like pressure plate or something. Whistle's going to, like, swim above where the holes are. Yeah, you don't trigger it. As you swim over. Yeah. It is so... I'm just thinking of how crazy different it is thinking of a dungeon in a three-dimensional space rather than as a a functionally two-dimensional. Right. All the fuckery, that's a foot. Why are you laughing? I'm right. You are. And I'm just like, I'm just like, it's hitting me. It's like, yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. Look, I I took the ability to swim when I joined the game. Like, it's been how many sessions I need to make the most use of it that I can. You know what? There, I'm gonna take a look down this hallway if you don't mind. Uh, our glorious uh, Mr. DM. Yeah, uh, can you make a difficulty for speed defense for me, please? Speed defense, you say? Yep. Difficulty for you say? Yep. Is it eased by enable others? It is, yep. There you go. So, down to three? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, and I'm going to use an effort. Yeah, um, you peek your head round to to look in, and something instinctual, maybe since shouts, look out. Um, 
as you narrowly avoid being grabbed by a long articulated limb. Oh. Hmm. That'd be a small problem. Yeah. It's like <laughs> coiled up in this room. Like the back half of this room is all tentacle coiled upon itself. You can see a hole in the floor. Um, so it's safe to say something big and scary is down there. <laughs> yeah, uh, can everyone roll initiative for me, please? Oh no. If I have to. I mean, I yeah. guess. You know what? You know what, Al? Just for you, I can. Yeah. yeah this thing's going to keep trying to grab people, so. I have an um, inability uh, on that, too. Uh, <laughs> difficulty zero? Or what difficulty is this? Yeah, it's if you beat the initiative of of the thing, so it's flat. All right, so just none slash unknown. Yeah. Two, four, two, four, three. Uh, yeah, Kit and uh, Bloodwind get to go before and take an action now, and everyone else will go afterwards. Um. Well, is Bloodwind a three? Not a. Yeah, I, actually, I have an inability. So... Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Kit, you get to move first. Everyone else is afterwards. Okay. Um, I don't have any like ranged weapons other than throwing knives. Those don't really work underwater. So I'm gonna. Uh, there's no real hold your action thing. I'd let you do a held action. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna like stand next to the doorway and like have my spanner ready. So if it grabs anyone, I'm just gonna slam it. Uh, sure. Slam it down, and try and get it to release. Basically yeah. helping if if they get caught. Yeah. So if it succeeds, then you can whack it as it goes past. Sure. Uh, the tentacle is going to go uh, Theodric is still the closest I think so if you can make yeah. another speed 4 speed defense for me please All uh, right. difficulty 4 speed defense I think I said that wrong difficulty 4 Ooh. that's yikes yeah so uh, Kit you can make your, your melee attack uh, difficulty 4 I'm going to try and bonk it with my spanner. Yes. Difficulty four. Um, spend an effort. Speed roll. No asset. Um, I'll put an effort to the da- damage as well. Woo! <laughs> effort to the damage. So that's plus three and then six. So how much damage is, is it? Seven plus six? Flip your neck. You oh. just did like thirteen um, damage. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know. It's applying the effort already in the seven. Yeah. Ten damage. Yeah. Yeah, ten um, still. Um, or a minor <laughs> effect. Seven damage and a minor effect or ten damage. It's up to you. Um I think if it was a major effect I'd take it, but I'll take the three damage. Sure. Yeah, it's a ten damage to this thing. Um Theodric uh, can you take four damage for me, please? Uh, reduce that... by your armor, obviously. So I think that's down to a one for you. Um, yes. Yeah. Because I'm armor three, so it starts out from might, if I remember correctly. So yeah. Well, no. we're talking about might. Can you now make a might check difficulty seven for me, please? Uh, I I would like to spend an effort on that. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's really all I can do. Yeah, uh, this, Kit, so. as you bash this thing with your spanner, like yeah. you hit it oh! so hard, it like crumples underneath your hit. Um, like it is squished almost paper thin at the point of impact. The the thin end of this tentacle whipped out. Um, Theodric, it it 
slaps it against like your upper thigh, and that's the damage that it does to you. And it goes to wrap around your leg and pull. Um, but I think it's it's Kit's hit on it that makes it like, and your incredible strength as you stand your ground. That um, this tentacle slithers away, and it uncoils rapidly, going like you hear like a sound as the end of the room clears out, um, leaving just a. Let me draw. Oh no, that's blue. Hang on. It can be blue if it wants to. <laughs> you know, not everyone's just... got to be happy all the time. Blue double. No, <laughs> oh, for goodness' sake. Double double guy. <laughs> Whatever, I'll, free, I'll freehand it. Anyway, uh, this is why Cal wants to kill us. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you click it just me, leaves can... a dark, cracked hole in the floor where the tentacle was poking up through. Does anyone feel confident enough to look over the edge? I say we send uh, Glitterbot. That sounds like a good <laughs> idea. Yeet! Like... <laughs> Literally, if you could understand him, he'd be like cursing at you. R two D two. Uh, yeah, no, he'll like crumble over. Probably like smack his leg out of the out of the way as he like walks past and just sort of like edges really close and looks over to see if there's oh, anything there. The circle grows to uncover him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't see through Glitterbot's eyes. So. Glitterbot oh. looks over the edge of the hole, sees some shit. Can Glitterbot report what he, what he sees to Cinch? Uh, I don't think I don't think Glitterbot has enough communication potential for that. Hey, hey, my Glitterbot. I understand him. Yeah, I'm not giving you ESP via robot. It's not ESP. I understand his clicks. Yeah, it's a it's a battle robot. It says uh, <laughs> it it says no enemy seen. All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could could I <laughs> use my monocle of dark vision to just like peer down the hole? You <laughs> absolutely can. Give me a, a speed check, no difficulty. Oh boy. I might not actually die from this. I'm one. gonna hold on to uh to Theatrix's back to make sure that nothing pulls him through. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, You're like grabbing the back of his collar. Yeah. <laughs> you all form a chain. <laughs> yeah, Theodric, you see down into the hole, it looks like um it looks like at one time this would maybe have been um like airlock ducting, like this room would have been in atmosphere. Um, it looks like some kind of uh, pipe work underneath. It's quite wide. It's like three foot across, maybe. Like, diameter. Right. Um, looks like some sort of uh, pipe working. Um, highly recommend no one jump into it. So, so, so there's a monster in the pipes. Yay. Yes. In in the vents, you might even say. <laughs> you might so... even call it. You might even call it a predator. So time to go. I guess. Are we assuming that uh, our quettle friend uh, has perished? <laughs> So you know what, Theodric? <laughs> that pipe could just about fit a quetzal. I mean, it looks like it could fit a quetzal. So I mean, assuming so, that you know they were alive when whatever grabbed it grabbed it. Uh, uh I'm gonna be honest. He, he's pretty. I, I'm willing to. I'm willing to bet anything that that quetzal is that creature's lunch or supper at this given moment. Okay. Do we now want to return to the room where we can potentially breathe uh, and figure out where we go from there, or do we want to continue investigating the dark and cold and wet tunnels? Um, I 
I'm personally of the opinion that we head back to the beacon so that way we don't have to have it blaring when uh, the authorities arrive. Sounds good to me. I... Any objections? I still, want, I still want to know what's in these two corridors either side of us. I mean, I suppose we can take a quick look. Oh. <laughs> uh, you go left, I'll go right. We're gonna split I'm not, up? I'm not sure splitting up when... <laughs> it literally gets closer to, like, um, <laughs> Whittle when he, gets, he says, go left, go right. It's, it's For all we know, you'll travel straight into the lair of whatever creature that was. Um, Possibly. Whittle. I think on this wall you see something written in in Quetel. What does it say? Warning, octopus. <laughs> Sorry, I I had to make the joke. Yeah, so um this is translated to English in Quetel. It's different words, um, particularly uh, the name that's listed here. Um, you see in scratchings, as if done by teeth or fingernails, you see, beware the hollow queen, for she occupies these halls. Be sealed, do not reveal, for the way ahead is dark. Oh. Uh, Whittle will read that <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, where are like are we get uh Yeah, uh I will I will paste in chat what the actual name in in uh Concord language is. There you go. That's that's the name that you're translating to Hollow Queen. Are we sure we want to go down any of these hallways? Like, you guys sure about that one? Yeah. I wasn't uh. sure to start with, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean... Definitely not going deeper into the uh, side of the cliff, but see what's over here. Oh. The cliff face. If we progress slowly and we are ready to pull back at a moment's notice, uh, then kids? knowing what's here is probably a good idea. Uh, now it's been pointed out to you, Kit, as you look down this corridor, along this wall, you see a hollow queen scratched into it over and over again. Uh, no, never mind. Um, I just got back. <laughs> 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 He's already swimming underneath the uh, the bar. Uh, the um, I was about to ask. <laughs> it all I mean, swims only, over. Only one would fire, but yeah, you you get back and uh, you stumble back into atmosphere. Yeah, Theodric will swim over as well. I, I think at this point, I think Bottom's going to also. Like use the state the same trick to stop the other javelin. So mm-hmm. if at any sure, point the trap's now is, disabled, yeah, yeah. So that if someone is absent-minded enough in the future, it won't be a problem. Cool. We leave Cinch in the water. Yes, I Cinch is all alone. Cinch goes the... missing. No, <laughs> no! It, in the like... Hollow Queen infested waters. Oh dear. Yeah, you can all uh, make your way back up to yeah. the atmosphere, no problem. Yeah. I'd like literally just disappear. Um, like, where'd my token go? Ran right away. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have any better view for down this way? Uh, yeah, I think with your with your new site. Uh, with my monocle. Yeah, I think you can see this much. Oh. Well, I found some rooms. Bells, maybe? Probably. 
Um, anything, anything interesting in there? Not yet. Um, Whittle, out of out of my own curiosity, does uh, does the mythology of this world have say anything about uh, some uh, hollow queen or? Is this as alien to you as it is to me? Yeah, I have no idea what it's talking about. Neither, uh, neither mythology nor history. Uh, it instinctively goes to his. Uh, Actually, uh, and tries to look it up and realizes he has no signal. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, can I do a a history check? Sure, you absolutely can. Um, it's no difficulty. Just see how much you know about this I am story. Trained in history, so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, it's, it's, well, I, the I, historian on this. Uh, I think you can gain an XP. Even nice. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there's a story of the Hollow Queen, um, of a cell block. That back in the day, something happened. No one's quite sure what. And this cell block has been, or at least the story of this cell block has been lost to history of way back before when the jailers were still in charge of a cell block that revolted and managed to beat off the jailers. And it was led by uh, a figure, like a a Boudicca-like figure known as the Hollow Queen. Mm-hmm. And it was rumored to be around the shed block, but it never found. It's like, it's like you know, it's like Long John Silver's treasure or Neverland. Like, it's that level of you know, you tell kids at night to scare them stories of the Hollow Queen who was fought off the jailers. Well, uh, there was one story about a a cell blocking revolution against. The, that successfully fought off the jailers, led by a, someone named the Hollow Queen. Um, how true that was, I uh, was uh, up for debate. It was a, a story to tell children at night, you know. But uh, well, the uh, scribblings mean either this is it, or someone believed it was it. Well, either way, um, it's not necessarily good news. Uh, although it, especially if someone is uh, inhabiting or ha- at some point inhabited uh, this area. Um, well, I think you best start believing in ghost stories because I think we're in one. <laughs> Well, that's that's the thing about it is, is the scrolling on the wall tales of the actual um, Hollow Queen, or is it someone who grew up with those stories, and then when they ended up here went mad? Well, if, if the Hollow Queen, you know, led the revolt, wouldn't she be a good guy? Not necessarily. Says very, very hopefully. <laughs> I mean, that's not necessary. That's not necessarily the truth. Oh, uh, I should have said, Theodric. All along this this corridor uh, is um, still like waist deep. It's only down here that the water starts to to go down. All right. Um, going against my better judgment, I'm actually inclined to take a look into these cells. If anyone wants to follow. I'll follow, if only to keep a hand on your shoulder to pull you back if something goes wrong. Much appreciated, Bloodwin. And I'll have a hand on your shoulder as well. <laughs> oh. Ah, so we're forming a, a conga line of sorts. <laughs> yeah, chain. I'm just not staying here on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought that's what you were doing. <laughs> I don't think I can do the high kicks in this water. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to fault you for that. <laughs> yes, I guess we set off into more darkness. 
Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> yeah. You take this a look left and right. Copyright struck. <laughs> oh, no, have I just hidden it again? I have. You, you I don't have, know you why. You have, in fact, hidden me from the view. I don't know why the tool <laughs> does that. There you go. Uh, so you, you can see the darkness. floating around in uh, the waist high water. Not sure what it is at first, and then it quickly becomes apparent to you that it is piles of gently bobbing, gently floating bones. Like Quetel bones, by chance, or I don't think that you know enough about bones to <laughs> to know that. But just piles of what is clearly bone cartilage, that kind of thing. Excuse me, this is you the said first an osteologist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have books to spend still, right? You could be. <laughs> I, I could if I wanted to know what these bones were. Yeah. Books on it. Uh. Anyone who wants to make a difficulty for perception check. Is the fence in danger? No. Okay. Difficulty. And uh, Whitt Whittle is uh, um, continuing to hippopotamus. What was that about me not knowing what these bones are? <laughs> <laughs> it's not to do with the bones. Smart ass. <laughs> oh, Sinch's Sinch failed. <laughs> I forgot the difficulty yeah. bypass. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, Kit isn't going to roll. Okay. Um, so uh, you can all take uh, this as either a cipher or as an artifact. Um, you see, dripping down the walls, you see this viscous, black, thick liquid. Um, it's like coating the bottom of the cell floors as well. They may be an inch or so, and it's it's heavier than the water, so it's sinking down into it. Um, as the water disturbs it, it kind of billows up, and you can either add, um, how to do this? You can either add. Uh, I'll just copy and post it. You can add this cipher. Uh, which is, when used like a grenade, this sticky ink detonates, causing any creatures lower than this cipher's level within immediate range to have their speed in it. It's level 1d6 mm. plus 2. Or you can instead take it as an artifact that reads like this. Uh, ink brackets crafting ingredient. This sticky, dark black fluid has many potential applications, but one of them is increasing the amount of force an explosive could apply to its surrounding materials. Further work needed to understand it. I'm taking it as an artifact. As am I. Can I make it a glitter bomb? Can I, can I make my glitter bombs weaponized if I use it as an artifact? Hear me out, right? Well, further work is needed to understand it, Sinch. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to take the... the... <laughs> Cypher! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out, right? Put this on a thermite <laughs> grenade. Paste. Yeah. Um, so uh, you can have like a, a test tube or some kind of Tupperware container or whatever and scoop up samples of this thick black ink like liquid. What level is it? Just one? It said the cipher is 1d6 plus 2. I mean, the uh, artifacts. On yeah, the it's level 1. Yeah. 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 And depletes 1 in D 1d20? Currently doesn't have a depletion, because it doesn't really have a use in current form. All right, so just leave that leave that there then? Yeah. All right. And as you continue along... Oh, God. Why is it, first time. Every time I use it, the first time it hides everything. I do, oh, no. Okay. Could is... when you go oh, this is coming of... for us. <laughs> when you go the speed of light, you only live there in darkness. <laughs> As you look down the corridor, you see a similar scene in every room. This thick black ink, the bones. Could I um make an attempt to uh discover more about uh the ink using uh as I am 
as I have master identifier, you are trained in identifying function of any kind of device. Yes, exactly. Uh, you definitely can. Uh, to do the master identifier. Uh, yeah, you, you're able to identify it uh, as uh, a biological. And yeah, it it has applications in explosives, in weaponry, also in more mundane things. It could be uh, it could be a catalyst, could speed up um, chemical production. Lots lots of potential uses. Okay. If you are able to um, somehow make this artificially or farm whichever creature produced it, that could be quite valuable. Interesting. I wonder which creature would produce the ink that's in the thing with the octopus. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't tell you, Matt. Yeah. I... <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> Just thinking if we come up against it, we kill it, guys. I mean, then we can have all the ink. And think of it. I could put so many thermite grenades in there. <laughs> we just need um, someone to, to like a weird biological specialist to graft the ink sacks into something that we can control, and it'll be fine. Exactly. If only we knew someone from the Children of the Vein. <laughs> There's remedy says. Please note, Children of the Vein, I love you. Please don't come after me. <laughs> uh, but yes, I guess we retreat back to our vaguely safe room with a beacon in it. Yeah. Just, you might even uh... call it Beacon Space. <laughs> Is there any more writing on the walls in these cells? No. No, you don't see any writing on the wall in those cells. Uh, Whittle, you you can definitely find some bones that look like Quetel biology. I think Cinch is getting like morbidly curious about this path over here. I guess her pattern judgment. Maybe you can find like half a shattered Quetel skull if you look for long enough while you're collecting up ink. Uh, I'm gonna take the skull. <laughs> Transitioning from coral to bone, not too difficult, I imagine. In fact, making a gobbler that is half bone, half coral would be an interesting work. Yeah, and potentially, if you drink it, you'd live forever. Who knows? I know only one it, way to find out, right? It may be one path on the route to uh, Quetel Lichdom, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and again, from outside, you hear... Are we able to see out, like, through the doorway? Can we see whatever it is that's making that noise? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think you have to roll it. It just looks black outside. Well, with the occasional, like, star-like flashes of bioluminescent little krill creatures, but... Yeah, unless you're going out and shining a torch into the blackness, you can't see much of anything. Speak for yourself. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can see perfectly. You can see uh, the the rock wall that was previously your potential grave. Yeah. Finch, weren't you saying that uh, you thought that might be a, a symmetrical pathway to the top? Pardon? What? Uh, you go looking uh, at the north area. Do you think there was a symmetrical pathway? Yeah, maybe. I think she's getting morbidly curious and just like arguing with with, uh, Glitterbot about going this way. And, you know, there could be something. 
Is there, is there a way? I, I, start, I start helping Finch look for like a hidden door or something. Try and find one. I'm not sure there's a will, but there might be a way. <laughs> uh, just give me uh, a speed roll. No difficulty. Uh, do you want to roll it, or should I roll it? Uh, I have had all my good rolls for the game. I'm sure I'll fail it. Yeah. Which could be fun. Uh, I'll roll it. All right. Uh, just a speed roll. Yeah. Uh, let me use my uh, Everlight and one. Uh, difficulty zero. Mm-hmm. Just perception. One effort. One asset from Cinch. Helping mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, yeah, you mm. will see that the wall is crumbling in places and that there's a space behind. Um, if you find like a, a crack and shine your torch through, you just see the the rock of like the, the ravine outside. Okay. Yeah. So if if we ever got if the door that Whittle knew suspected might have been behind us, we could potentially smash our way through you. Potentially, yeah. Okay. What's really happened there is I've done a really shoddy job of trying to copy and paste the wall to cover a, a corridor that exists. Uh, GM to play a secret. <laughs> GM secrets. Yeah. Yeah, that's fully on me. I should have should have tried to blend it better. There's, there's no intended secret there. I'll just. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I would like to, I would like to find the unintended secret. <laughs> I think I just did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's literally just a corridor that leads off the edge of the map, and I I didn't want there to be a, a corridor there. So, gotcha. Mm. Fair enough. Oh. There is no corridor, we... only death. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we do our best to settle down to wait out the timer. And keep an eye out for intruding tentacles. Yeah. Now, the, as you like sit around and relax, a few minutes go by. Occasionally, like every 30 seconds or so, you hear the from outside. And um, I think anyone with a communicator, I think about two and a half minutes go by, and there's a, a, a squeal of static on your communicators. And you hear uh, Ehrlich going, the Hollow Queen! And then being cut off. Well, I guess he's still alive! Pretty sure I he's mean, dead he, at this point. He, he, he was alive and he was screaming about this Hollow Queen. It can't have been him that made the carvings and the. Uh, it didn't have long enough to be to have made those carvings, so no. maybe it's maybe it's not just one mad quetzal remembering a childhood story. Is there a cult living here? Did, did, I mean, did the what, what, what did what was the what did the story say the Hollow Queen was? Um, it didn't. And uh, yeah, well, very non specific. Yeah. yeah, there's been all manner of uh, creatures sealed in in uh, jail blocks from a uh, sentient Quelton and Turret to uh, other sentient creatures, some extinct, some uh, dwindled in population to insignificance, and uh, others, well, not so sentient, but uh, certainly dangerous. Interesting. So, do if we, we don't def- know if we don't know what the Hollow Queen was? Then, how is it that at least two beings have identified whatever this thing is as the Hollow Queen? Doesn't it say Hollow Queen on the walls? Well, yes, that was the first identification. I'm counting the person who wrote that as the as one of the people who identified it. Well, um, if uh... Our uh, pilot friend, uh, they are capable of reading just as I am. If they uh, read that and uh, whatever they saw, they well, 
I'm not I simply sure. assumed. I'm not sure that he would have had the time to have read that, seeing as I believe they were grabbed from this room by a tentacle and then rapidly pulled through to wherever those tentacles are coming from. Which kind of tells me he's been alive for a while. He might still be alive now. Are we just going to leave him there? Cinch, can you make a difficulty 7 speed check for me, please? Oh. (laughs) (sighs) So this is how Cinch dies. Love you guys. Oh, no. Uh, no, And with this, you're assessing danger. No, you're not assessing danger. You are in danger. (laughs) Oh, shut up. Oh, bye, guys. Bye, Cinch. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, uh, (laughs) Uh, Hey. Hey. Cool thing. Cool thing. Can I use, like, my magical new ability to try re-rolling that? You definitely can. Yeah. You're going to need it. (laughs) You can use the ability... uh, Where have you... Uh, It's probably near the bottom. Uh, I did put it in here. Yeah, I know you did. I can't find it. Weird. I could enable others. Find the way. Oh, it's here. It should have been a special ability. That's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cinch is going to use the ability Chaotic, which is uh, you can re-roll a die of your choice, uh, but you take a GM intervention. No matter Um, how good I get. Yeah. So... (laughs) You need to apply effort on this, or you literally can't succeed. Yes, I'm. I'm gonna apply to, and yeah. bring that speed down to twenty-one five sixteen. Yeah. And is it still like base seven, and then goes up to five? Goes down to five, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, oh, no. Yeah. So. Um, since, experience. <laughs> um, you hear uh, a, a creeping voice in your head. You know, hmm? Unacceptable! And you take uh, one intellect damage. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, for, for everyone else, um, since she disappears. Bye, guys! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Since she's also dead, good to know. <laughs> but, like, disappeared as in teleported, as in, like, as in, uh, you hear her, her scream rapidly <laughs> diminish as if a great distance away. Oh, fuck. Uh, Cinch, I will DM you what you now see. Uh, okay. please, please don't share it or I'm... communicate anything with the others. I will not. Uh, yeah. In in the two minutes while we're waiting, <laughs> could I have a use a recovery roll? Yeah. Okay. This is what you see, Cinch. <laughs> so. While I was, I, should... oh, go ahead. I was okay with a quetel I'd never met before going missing. I'm not quite so comfortable with a friend. <laughs> yeah, we probably should go help her. Yes, we need to deal with this before it picks us all off one by one, and Whittle will like go over and like grab, like hold hold Glitterbot's hand. <laughs> like, yeah. the... Start leading glitter bottom. <laughs> yeah. It it's pretty obvious to you all. I think I think uh just for sake of story, as you hear Cinch like scream and, and get dragged off, you see a tentacle coming from the same direction as before. It's sneaked its way up the corridor and uh, and grabbed her. Alright. I'm let's go. <laughs> <laughs> And because the trap's disabled, you know, we don't have to worry about any yep. of that. Don't have yep. to worry about that. Yeah. Is it, head underwater is it again. again. Yeah, it was there, but it's... Uh... Could we fit a human in a battle suit? 
through that pipe. <laughs> Three foot uh, wide. No. How wide are you at the shoulders? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the if it's part of the air duct system of this place, then it's got to attach somewhere else in this same building. Do you know me? Deeper then? I'm actually thinking we head to the right. Let's try that then. And yeah, I'm going to draw my machete as it's the only item I have that will work as a weapon underwater. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm going to offer him. I'm going to offer Bloodwind the Najon War Saber. Yeah, I mean, as, if, as you walk down it, to the right, eventually you come across a section of corridor where the roof has fallen in. and You can't make any more progress. All right, new plan. Uh, if if handing me the Najan War Saber makes you uh, less effective, I would keep it with you. <laughs> I mean, I've fought with one sword before in this game, and it was I was still just as effective during uh, imperfect failure. Okay, um, sure. Unless someone else wants a, a, a useful weapon underwater. <laughs> Uh, I've got my uh, couple of knives. My guns from Carter Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'll take my last statement. <laughs> uh, Theodric's just going to go, I would like that back when we're done. I would never uh, deprive uh, someone of, the, of one of their uh, private weapons. Just. Yeah. See, Make he and Armin's sword ready to go in one hand, thermite grenade in the other. Since yeah. we're submerged, I imagine Whittles like swing along the roof. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, you can be. Um, and as you get down to here, um, it's not on the map, but you find a staircase that leads down into darkness. Alright. Into the darkness we go. Follow right behind the guy who can see. <laughs> yeah. You, you all go down. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let me grab your tokens and transition the map so you can see what uh, what Cinch sees. Uh, you head down into the darkness, and you you realize as you're walking along this corridor, you realize that the walls are moving, and suddenly you become very aware aware that the same like tentacle material from before is overlapped on on itself like a sleeping snake making the the walls of this corridor uh, as you make oh. your way down it opens up into uh, it looks to be like a maintenance space there's these big stacks that look like uh, atmosphere scrubbers like at one point this was like the air conditioning and air filtering and, and airlock control system and in the center of it you see, uh, as you look down, you can hear, um, Cinch, what are you saying? Um, I'm like screaming at the top of my lungs um, and crying about how it's sticky and gross feeling. Yeah, you're hearing this click of your communicators. You're in range of Cinch again. Um, Whittle, you can hear the, the quettle screams through the water. And you see... Uh, what at first just looks like another part of the machinery, and then its eye opens. Hello. Yeah. Scared so hard, Whittle exits the roll twenty game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can all roll initiative for me. That. That's a big ol' that's a big ol' fish. We wanted to send the result of this roll to the tracker, but no valid token was selected. Was I not allowed to? Don't worry about it. Okay. I don't really use the roll twenty tracker. Oh boy. Uh, three, six, thirteen, twelve, ten. Yeah, you you're all going after this thing. Um let's see. Who's closest? 
you, you arrange it before I do anything. Arrange yourself as you are coming in from that bottom right corner. I'm definitely in the front, so... Yeah, I figured you might want to rearrange that. I, I have a sword and a grenade. <laughs> yeah. I I'll, have I'll, an idea. I'll, I'll, I'll need the stats on that war saber. Um, it's basically just, it's a, light, it's a light weapon. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, try... There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a light. Light. Is it light? Uh, yeah. Uh, stat is might. Damage is uh, two. I keep forgetting I have. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I have combat prowess, so all of my attacks get all of my melee weapon attacks get plus one damage. Yeah. Um, Whittle, are you looking at this thing? Yep. Yeah. So, um, can you make a difficulty eight intellect defense for me, please? (laughs) Yeah. As you look at this thing and stare into its eye, just a cold instinctual terror fills your body and you're gonna find and um, I think uh, you instinctually close your eyes and everything that you do uh, on your next turn is gonna be hindered. Uh, You are frightened. Uh, Let's see. Do I have anything for that? I think I've got like a screaming face somewhere. Use this one. There you go. Yeah, you are you're frightened by the glare of this thing. Um, Kit, can you please make a difficulty seven speed defense for me, please? Seven. That's twenty one. Yeah. Uh, at least one. Okay. I'm just going to fail this one, because... Cool. Yeah. Uh, So... Oh, I could (laughs) have. I could have. Maybe. No, I wouldn't. No. No, No, still no. I thought it was slow. You need two easies to get that. Yeah. (laughs) I could have done two easies. I could have. I was. Actually, let me check. Moves like a cat. Surely you've got something here. I got... uh, Not yet. I get most of my stuff next time. Uh, uh, next level. I'm gonna use block. Uh, but I didn't have the time to prepare that. Uh, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah. You one of the tentacles. Um, that's like on the walls shoots a cloud of sticky black liquid towards you, and uh, you have your speed hindered. Just your speed. Um. Okay. As uh, as you are engulfed in this sticky black liquid, and I will do this. I guess that looks like goo. There you go. And finally, so Theodric, can you make a difficulty six speed defense for me, please? I absolutely can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spend an effort. Don't forget about like enable others is still here, right? If That's these true. are all physical things. I mean I failed, but <laughs> uh with Fine. the uh with the assistance you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, with yeah assistance, no you got assistance, so Yeah. Cinch screaming at the top of her lungs is somehow still helping you. <laughs> you no know what? Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know I'll take it. <laughs> the shrill voice coming from me over the static is like affecting the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> that inches from your face, Theodric, um, a razor sharp beak snaps in front of your face, sending ripples through the water as uh, the main body of this beast lunged at you. And it's player's turn. Uh, since you are grappled by by the creature's tentacles. What does that mean? Uh, it means oh, you are held in place and cannot move until you make like a might defense. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, actually, can can I use getaway at all? Uh, getaway. you. Let me read it. I'd have to have a turn, and then. Mm, no. Damn. So you can either take an action 
or you can try to break free of the tentacles. Okay, well, like I'll try and break th- free of the tentacles. Sure. It's that's... gonna be a difficulty six might check. Ooh. I don't think I have anything. Oh, I've got this worn out inability. Does that does that is that gonna screw me? Worn out? Yeah, it's with the, the chaotic change is one of the things. I don't oh, know let, that let me read that. I've fully uh, let me check. Chaotic. I didn't remember that being an inability. Might defense tasks are hindered. Uh, this isn't a defense. You're you're okay. attacking. You're trying to break out. So you're okay. fine. Sweet. So you Until said it, it gets to the monster's turn, it tries to crush you. But you know. Oh. <laughs> no, we're we're gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that 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 effort. I'm gonna use that whole effort thing. Here. Yep. And uh, bring that down to four, and hope real hard. And. No. No, the you try to wriggle away and, and the tentacles grip tightly. I think one is around like an ankle and another is around like your shoulder blade. You're Ugh. being held in place, and yeah, it, while you've been down here, it's been bringing you like directly in front of its eye and like staring into your soul, basically. Oh. Ah, bring it on, bitch! I already got one yeah. voice in my head. <laughs> and uh, Ehrlich has like three or four tentacles completely wrapped around them, and they've been screaming. And their communicator is like floating through the water near them, like just out of their grip. And they, it looks like they're being they they are being bent backwards, and they are unnaturally further than their spine would naturally want to go. Oh. Uh, in this room, is there anything mechanical that I could attempt to hack, or is it just a bare room at this point? Uh, this, so it's like it's used to be like the atmosphere center. So there's long rusted and broken machinery around. Okay, so I don't know, maybe you could hobble would... something, but nothing very difficult. Functional. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Unlike uh, the ceramic to... tile of above it, it's metal deck plate in here. It's like a, a maintenance yeah. room. If I wanted to move over next to Cinch, would that be a full turn of movement? No, that's fine. This this entire area is like immediate range. It's a okay. very small area. I would like to run over here and then attack one of the tentacles holding Cinch. You certainly can. Uh, <laughs> um, difficulty, sorry. Is that a short range or a immediate range? Immediate, this this whole area. I, I thought immediate was like just right around you, like melee range. Immediate is like the same room. Okay. Yeah. Short is like the next room over, long is the next building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if I want you to the... mechanically want to be a short distance away, you can be. That's fine. But uh, in I terms of that. movement. I have a thing that I like, like improves my movement. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So I can do, move a short distance yeah. and do something as part of another action. So yeah. What um, was the difficulty attacking this thing on Cinch? Four. Four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like one hundred percent trying to man- like maneuver the thing into like a better attack <laughs> position. So, and the, the, the war saber was a might weapon, right? So it can be speed if it's just yeah. a melee attack. It doesn't really matter. I just want to whichever one works. And it's fine. eased because it's a light melee weapon, so it's down to three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two. Two because of enable others. Yep. Yep. Like she's like pulling the <laughs> ankle tentacle taut. Yeah. Uh, and right. I'll throw some effort on the damage, I guess. Whip. <laughs> no whippy, no whippy. Ooh. Ooh, how is that eight damage? Uh, I threw two effort onto the damage. You sure did. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you you cut through this thing and immediately sever it. 
and you'd expect like some kind of scream or like bestial roar, but it's just dead silent. Um, from the end where you cut it off, the black sticky ink uh, billows out, making clouds in the water, and yeah, the it detach it unwraps itself from Cinch's uh, ankle and kind of floats through the air. The detached as the writhing tentacle, now damaged, retreats back to the main body. Oh. Yeah. Hype. Um, yeah. Someone else is going, I guess. Yeah, Theodric, Kit, Whittle. Oh, yeah. Um, I, oh, you you want to do something? I was going to basically do the same thing, try and cut uh, the... Uh, yeah, you and I had the same idea then. Yeah, attack a tentacle. Yeah, difficulty yeah. four. Difficulty four. All right, uh, this, means, this means I can justify doing my other plan. Thank <laughs> <I'm going> you. To... <laughs> Does that plan involve thermite grenades by any chance? <laughs> Cal, you know me too well. Of course it fucking does. Since, since when has any Knight of Seahees plan involved thermite grenades? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying that for the Sundered Heart they're standard issue, but... <laughs> uh, but the, 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 the Sundered Heart's uniform does have suspiciously shaped uh, webbing. <laughs> uh, difficulty 5 because I'm hindered on speed tasks. Uh, yeah, if you're doing a speed attack, yeah. But it's eased by uh, Cinch's thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's still four. It's uh, back to four. Sorry. And does your weapon count as light? Um, it is, but I'm not trained in it. Okay. You should be trained fix, in it. We can fix I, that. I, I, I can use it, but I'm not. I don't have trained. You don't have light melee weapons? You can use light and medium weapons. Light and medium weapons without penalty. That's trained. Yeah. yeah. That's just, that's not inability. It's just untrained, right? No, it's, yeah, that's, that's basically trained. Okay. There's no penalty, so it's not inability. Yeah. But it's untrained as well. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> trained gives a bonus. Point being, trained. you're not hindered using it. Skill yeah. untrained. Uh, for difficulty. Um, I spend two effort. Uh, no assets. No extra damage. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, you cut into the tentacle, uh, some ink billows out the side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Theodric, Whittle. I'll let Cedric go first. All right. So, is it possible that I can get both of these tentacles without getting the other quaddle? Quaddle, however you pronounce it. Both of these ones? Yeah, both of these tentacles without hitting any of the two people I actually kind of care about. With a grenade? With, Not a with chance. A thermos. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. All right. New plan. <laughs> We're going to go right up into this thing. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can't get that thermite grenade in its mouth. Yeah, I, f I figured you might be trying to shove a thermite grenade in its beak. Uh, <laughs> Just... That's going to be uh, difficulty 7. Uh, speed. Speed, you say, eh? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Um, or I guess if you would like, if you'd prefer to take it in, mate, you can be like trying to <laughs> grab this thing's beak and wrench its mouth. Yeah, open that's kind of what I'm thinking. Instead. Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah. I um, use that pull. Yeah, what I'm thinking is like, um, this wouldn't really be hunting, so because you don't really hunt with a thermite grenade. <laughs> I mean, you can, <laughs> I'm sure. More like um, fishing. Yeah, really. Well, I, I guess it would technically fall under hunting. Yeah, technically. So, 
Would that bump that down to a six? I tell you what, I'll, I like it. I'll give it to you. You're hunting <laughs> a giant creature, but you're still hunting. Shut. All right. Uh, I'm going to spend an effort on that. Does and any... Don't forget, cinches enable others. True. She's like, so that brings I've... it down to five. Like, I basically have to have to crit this in order to get it to actually do something. <laughs> nope! Oh. That That's a nope. Uh, <laughs> I think, like, I think what happens is you get close and you have the, you have a bit of a mental freeze as you're like, wait, hang on. Th- this is stupid. Why are you ha- doing this? Hand on the upper half of the beak, hand on the lower half of the beak, which hand holds the grenade, I think, is the thought process yeah. as, as you approach, and you're like, huh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, I yeah. like the idea of that the grenade's just floating nearby. <laughs> yeah, it's just floating. <laughs> you're like, right, okay, grab the beak, and you, I think you successfully open up its beak, and then go, ha now to put the grenade, oh. <laughs> How do I? <laughs> I'm just like somebody put that grenade in here, please. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Yeah, you like take a hand off to, to go grab the grenade, and it s- snaps shut, and like ah, uh, drat. <laughs> <laughs> Whittle. Uh, Whittle is going to use enthrall, and uh, just be like. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, creature. Um, can you please stop uh, attacking us and uh, taking our people? That would be very much appreciated. Uh, we would be very thankful if you were to stop doing that. And uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I assume because I'm hindered, I need to do like an intellect. Like Yeah. Uh, just... Give me a difficulty. Mm, this thing is stupid. Give me a, a difficulty for intellect check. This thing is stupid. Yeah, to see if you are uh, able to get past your fear. Ooh. Yeah, and you, you summon up the the Hobbit courage within, and uh, yeah, able to use your charms on this on this creature. I think it, its big eye that was fixed on you kind of dilates a bit, kind of like a cat's eye when they see a treat. Uh, it like expands a little bit into this black sphere that almost mirrors your own. Another question is: uh, Can it understand me? It cannot, but it doesn't have to. That that was the true question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You're doing some hypnotic dance or something. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> and yeah, I am my turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is enthralled, so the only thing that's going to happen is Cinch, can you make a difficulty 6 might defense me, please? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> uh, take 6 damage. <laughs> oh. oh god. As you feel the one that's wrapped around your shoulder crunch into your joint, and you feel like your arm is being ripped out of your socket. Oh, that's 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 okay. Well, that's zero for might now. Oh damn! Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> really painful. Like that hurt a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it did. Yeah, I think your shoulder is like actually dislocated. So louder screaming from the t- tiny purple haired thing. Yeah, is that purple? I, think... I, I always thought that was pink. It was, but then I got possessed, and that was one of the ah, things. That understood. Happened. Yeah, understood. My apologies. I did not understand yeah. that. Uh, okay. Those of you with the fancier environment suits, the auto mute sense which goes above a certain decibel level. Um, <laughs> those of you in the cheaper ones, your eardrums are hurting. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's just peaking. It's we can't hear. Yeah, yeah. The mic's cutting out at the top. <laughs> uh, oh. Things are oh. going to happen with Ehrlich, who <laughs> uh, is bent so far that the back of their head is now touching like their heels. Gonna um, break you like a slim jim. Yeah, you hear oh, some yeah. cracks as uh, cartilage vertebrae 
uh, uh, snapped, and it's player's turn. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know why I went March Man Randy Savage, but... I guess I will repeat my previous action and remove the other... Or attempt to remove the other... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's wrapped it's cool. tight around Cinch's arm. So it was it's difficulty four reduced by one by my weapon, one by Cinch's aid thing. So difficulty two. Yeah. And then I will apply effort to the damage. Yeah, once again you you slice down and you cut off the end of this thing that, that billows ink and uh and cinch. It, and and in doing so, I reduce myself to zero might by burning it, burning effort. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knocked down the track as well. Oh. Yeah. Um, Cinch, you feel the the crushing pressure on on your shoulder suddenly release as it uh, wriggles around you like a living thing for a second before floating off. And oh. yeah, the, the end of the tentacle retracts into the main body, billowing this black ink. Oh, since you're angry. Picture, these tentacles are attached to the squid thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, go. Cool. I was going to make sure that they were the same creature and I wasn't just. <laughs> like... <laughs> yes, the tentacles are coming from the giant squid. Yeah. Cool. They're we just have... different individual bits that we can beat up. Yeah. So if if they if he's if they've attacked the 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 tentacles and I go for the head, is it the, the does opportunist work? No. Why? It's the because... same creature. Too big, I'm guessing. Uh, we haven't forgotten Glitterbot. Uh, Glitterbot helps Cinch on Cinch's turn. Yeah. Uh, unless Cinch yeah. De- deliberately makes it a follower. Yeah, I feel like he can either be a, a extra combatant, which I think he's only level 3, or he reduces difficulties for my attacks. He two. can be an equipment or his own entity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so why oh, does an yeah. opportunist work if I go for the head? If they're the same uh, creature. For the same reason that the successful enthrall uh, is stopping it from biting at you. Uh, the this distributed nervous system. Oh. <sighs> I mean, to be fair, in in the immortal words of the late and the great, uh, you should have gone for the head. By (laughs) what I mean by that, attacking the tentacle doesn't doesn't break the enthrall, so... Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. And to to be fair, octopuses do have separate brains in their tentacles, so it all makes sense. Yes. (laughs) I did not know that, and that's really creepy. Yeah, right. Like that I just learned like, this is a new and horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Octopi are fucking wild. <laughs> um so so since be angry, um, what is the difficulty with going for the head? Was it like seven or eight? I'm gonna offer you a GM intervention, Cinch. Oh goody. <laughs> yeah. As you look well, down at your dislocated shoulder. Uh, you feel wet as there's a massive tear in your environment suit. Oh, shit. Well, I have a separate breather, so... Still get out of here and live. The, the reason I grabbed Cinch and not anybody else is on the map, she was stood closest to the corridor. Yeah, that's yep. kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Well, I'll take the experience on that. Sure, you and, can hand uh, one out. And I'll give the other one to Bloodwind for saving my ass from the creepy tentacles. You are very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, difficulty to attack the head is seven. Yeah, it's seven. Okay. Uh, That'd be reduced by f- to five or Glitterbot and uh, down to what about the the attack flare thing? 
if someone else attacks, if or if uh, Theodric attacks him first successfully, does that reduce it? Theodric okay. didn't attack successfully. <laughs> well, yes, but I don't have to go first. <laughs> That's true. Anyone That's true. can go. Um. So I'm thinking if Theodric goes and attacks successfully, Cinch can throw a thermite grenade at his butt and, you know, add speed damage what and almost auto-success that roll. Attack Flare? Well, I thought, like, if he successfully attacked, he had a thing where he gives an ease to... Because he's done that with Glitterbot. Oh, damn it. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking of Valentine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because okay. he's, he's flashy and fights with panache. Yes. Yeah. Okay, he's... fine. I'm just gonna like. I um... am going to use Stim and Glitterbot. Sure, that reduces and... your roll by five. Yes. And I'm gonna huck a grenade at him and use two effort for speed and that reduces it to zero <laughs> right okay ta-da and if i get a one i'm gonna be really upset ta-da yeah cool <laughs> uh you throw a grenade it it blows up next to the creature it recoils but it it doesn't like you'd expect flinching, screaming, something, and just a chunk gets blown out the side of its head. Oh! It it cool. doesn't move. It it doesn't really react. In fact, the only thing that you've seen moving on this thing are its tentacles and its eye. And again, black ink billows out the side where the grenade hit the creature, and it takes I think five damage from a thermite grenade. Yeah, cool. Well, I assume that's the enthrall gone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, she could technically do it again. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, order of operations if Whittle enthralls again before it's its turn, then yeah. Chip's going to pull out his big spanner and try and stun one of the tentacles holding uh, a crackle. A lick. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, difficulty four. Difficulty four with might. So I don't get the... Uh... Yeah. 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 I'm going for a bash. So it's difficulty... Helped by Cinch. So difficulty three. Uh, I'm going to spend two efforts. So I can definitely get this done. That's good. I don't know. Um, one effort to the roll. Um, no assets. Effort to the damage. Well then. Nat 20. <laughs> Woo! Uh, would you want a major effect or plus four damage? Uh, I think this is a major effect time. Sure. What would you like your major effect to be? Um, that uh, so I'll I'll just tell you before you decide you've killed the tentacle. Yeah, I I, I want to. I was thinking of having Elric use one of the tentacles as a weapon against it. Uh, ha sure. So um, <laughs> you can gain uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can gain to your equipment if you like. Uh, I actually prepared this in case it happened. Uh, yeah. You can, you can gain uh, to your equipment Meg's tentacle as a light melee weapon with a short range that grapples on hit. Um, light. So that'd be two damage. Okay. Uh, immediate yeah. range. Uh, it has short range. Short range. Okay. I do it across the room. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a bull whip, basically. But with more suckers. <laughs> okay, that makes tentacle. 
<laughs> I have to add yeah. that to my art now. Great. Anyone who took the ink can also rename it as Meg's Ink, should they so wish. Yep. I had to rapidly delete that earlier. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you, you gain that to your equipment. Um, you kill the tentacle. Yeah. Someone else can go. Um, I will... Can I swim up to this thing's eye and just try to leave the thermite grenade up there on it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you you can. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Still, still difficulty seven. Darn. Six. Yeah. Sorry, but <laughs> so <am> I... <laughs> difficulty six. Um. <sighs> It would just be better for me to try to stab the eye out, wouldn't it? Yeah, may- yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think instead I'll do that. So, just... So, I'm trained with my Sihian arming sword. Mm-hmm. So, does that bring it... That brings it down to five. Um... I think. Yes? Let me check. Because you're a soldier, and I think trained with attacks is a tier two ability. I don't think you have it yet. It Never doesn't mind. bring it down. All right, so it's still at six. You do uh, extra damage because you're a soldier. Yeah. Um... Then I'm gonna end up spending an effort on this. This is in. This is from Might. So. So it's difficulty seven, goes down to six with Cinch's help, goes down to five because it's a light weapon. And then effort to roll, so... Down to four. Uh, Is there anything else? Um, Bada bing, bada boom! Oh, right. I will put... No, I can't put an effort into damage because I only have the one edge. You can only uh, do it two roll or two damage, not both as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I don't think that it's that you miss because this thing doesn't move, doesn't try to dodge. I think it's that your sword just sinks in and just doesn't do any damage. Like you find yourself cutting through like a thick blubber. All right, that's that's me go. Cinch and oh, uh, Cinch went. Oh, no. uh, Whittle. Just Whittle. Just Whittle now, I think. Yeah. Uh, fear gone. Nope, still scared. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, keep him crawling. Can, you can take your turn to try and break the fear if you like, or you can enthrall. I'll enthrall. Cool. Uh, difficulty four to. Break past your <laughs> instinctual childhood fear of uh, giant sea creatures. Not Tarot, though, because that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're beyond fighting with the Tarot. It's uh, yeah. it's, it's it's the jailers who are the scary ones. Yeah. <laughs> the alliance of reciprocal hatred. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we would appreciate oh, if you, you if you didn't uh, come into any more conflict with us. That would be quite good indeed. Uh, in fact, if you could do <laughs> stop the activities you're doing, that that requires me to keep my eyes closed. That would be terrific indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've completely missed that you'd roll. It didn't make the bloop sound for me for some reason. Uh, uh, yeah, you you successfully enthrall the creature. Um, it. So successfully, in fact, that the only thing that happens is Ehrlich <laughs> once again gets attacked by the tentacle holding him. Um, and everyone can hear. It sounds like... It sounds like a fork being scraped against the dinner plate if the dinner plate was huge and made out of rock and the fork was a spacecraft. 
it's just like we <laughs> it's a scraping it's really loud it's vibrating the entire area you find just the water around you stirred into a rush like the ink is going everywhere and you hear like the rumble of engines from outside run Cinch thinks <laughs> I think that might be our ride I agree shall we get out of here I mean we might want to grab him first <laughs> uh, we, might. we might um can it, Finch shoot at the tentacle that's holding him? Yeah. Okay. Difficulty four. Uh, two. Two from. Bye bye. Two from Glitterbot and one because it's a light weapon. No, mm-hmm. that's not. Okay, so. Glitterbot. Do 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 do. Glitterbot. Oh, Glitterbot! Yay! Wait, I have to roll twice Success. because it's... I have to roll twice. It's an auto pistol, so then you don't you don't have to attack twice with an auto pistol. Oh, okay. Mm. All right, and... then I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, in fact, it gets harder yeah. to hit if you try and attack twice. Let me yeah. read it. Hang on. <laughs> I can't remember if I decided that you had to. Auto pistols yeah. are wild. Auto pistol, it just says fires twice. You don't get a choice in the matter. Oh. oh. Yeah. So I, to, I get to do that again? That's yeah. changed. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's with the um, with like the rifles and stuff, you can choose the single fire or fire twice. Like the Wyvern long rifle says can fire twice. The auto pistol just fires twice. With the uh... okay. Does Glitterbot help with the second roll too, or just the first one? Yeah. Okay. So it's still one? Uh, yes, but I haven't been counting your impaired. Oh. It's difficulty two, so the first one misses. Okay, fine. There we go. Hold the second one. And. Oh, well, oh, fine then. Yeah, I think I think it's you try to shoot with your damaged shoulder, and you're just like, ah, God! <laughs> you try to bring the gun up, and you just lose just can't a even. stream of shots into the floor. I think. Yeah. Anyway, that's gonna try and w- rescue the, you know. Yeah, it's player's turn yeah. again because yeah. this thing is. And fixed by the hypnotic whistle, Mario. <laughs> I guess I will run up to it and can I switch from using might to using speed now, or now that, oh, because I've been using might, I have sure. to continue. No, you okay. can use speed. It's fine by me. Might and speed are interchangeable for melee, in my opinion. Cool. The only reason I want to swap is so that I can access the other, the yes. other pool. The other pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so uh, difficulty four. Uh, but because I'm now impaired, it's with difficulty five. Uh, difficulty four because of cinch. Difficulty three because of light weapon. Yeah. Uh, and I can't apply effort to both roll and damage. Correct. One or the other. Oh, okay. I messed up in the past then. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. No worries. I, I, I thought it you know, prior to it being made, said sometime earlier this fight. I thought it was th- your effort pool applied to. No, uh, that, that's on me for not for not uh, catching that people were doing that earlier. Yeah, it's either was, two hit or two damage. I was doing one. I had a pool of two, and I did one for one, and one for the uh, other. No, it's fine. Yeah, it, it happened. And dice at okay. the table. It's fine. Uh, yeah, you kill it. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. You slice through this tentacle, and you KO'd three tentacles. Mm-hmm. And um, Ehrlich, I think, drifts through the water. Um, I think at this point, if we can, we grab and start running. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just for sake of time, um, the the creature again, weirdly still, doesn't move, doesn't make a sound. The only thing that moves is its eye. Um, you can all, you can grab Ehrlich, drag him along. Um, probably have to grab Whittle too. 
Yeah. 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 With all <laughs> mocking in, in your boots. Um, I like the idea that as Bloodwind grabs, uh, I forgot this one's <laughs> name. Ulrich. Ulrich. You know, yeah. Theodric will grab Whittle. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, party grabs everyone. You're all bundled up. Uh, I think you head back to that room with the beacon. <laughs> and um, you find within it uh, a, a short figure in. Uh, it looks like a classical diving suit, you know, all bronze and round. And mm-hmm. you recognize the the rodent like moon beaming face of Greek fire who who chitters and ushers you outside. And as you exit the cell, you see a spacecraft that should not be down here. It is <laughs> as wide as the ravine itself. Stuff is breaking off on either side. Rocks are crumbling down. Um, I think <laughs> I think you see various creatures attached to it, like lamped on, like the suckers from Star Wars Episode Five. Yep. Like there's there's stuff mm-hmm. trying to bite at power conduits, and um, there's a, a dropped ramp, and he ushers you on board. And um, yeah, we, we I think uh, we fade out on the episode there with everyone being hurried on to. You to better have hazard pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no money for the episode, but it was an experience. And I think you can all take two experience for tackling with the mm. Hollow Queen. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Blood win. I guess it's <laughs> just like I yeah. Uh it's <laughs> Yeah. I could grab it's another skill at four XP that you can grab, yes. You can, or uh, you can grab a load of different things at four XP, which count towards your yeah, tear up. You can get an advancement. Uh, we'll... Sweet. Yeah. So you're all ushered onto uh, Greek Fire's spaceship, the Risky Business. Um, <laughs> cool. You're ushered to uh, a, a debrief, and uh, yeah, you you explain what happened uh, to Greek Fire, and you gain experience from from your ordeal. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to do advancements or anything like that, we're in uh, downtime now. But Theodric, um, your advancement, you can gain four points to apply to any pool of your choice. Mm-hmm. You can increase the limit on your effort. Um, you can increase your edge in any pool of, of your choice. Or you can gain any non-combat skill that you want. Do you guys mind it? I, I want to. You, you can remove this from the recording if you don't like it, but I've got something that I think fits very well with this session. Sure. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the kraken sleepeth, faintest sunlights flee. About his shadowy sides above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height. And far away into the sickly light, from many a wondrous grot and secret cell. Unnumbered and enormous polypi winnow with great arms the slumbering green. There hath he lain for ages and will lie, battening upon the huge sea worms in his sleep. Until the latter fire shall heat the deep, then once by man and angels to be seen, in roaring he shall rise and on the surface die. Oh, Bloodwin just reciting that to themselves yeah. it, in the debrief, <laughs> just rocking back and forth. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. I, yeah, like Sitch is sitting there trying to like push her shoulder back in, <laughs> and just like very quiet. Yeah, very cool. Yes, I still I need to choose an advancement for my tier. Um, it's Tennyson, right? Yeah, the the Kraken yeah. by Tennyson. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so let's take a look. Extra effort. Yeah, I, I've had that pulled up on my on my on a, in a tab since literally <laughs> since I saw the first tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah. my first thought since I thought it. <laughs> it's like Cinch gets grabbed. I've seen so much hentai that starts like this. <laughs> oh, oh my dear God. <laughs> 
weird uh, flex, but okay. <laughs> I think the one that you have to take, Bloodwin, is uh, the four points to any pool. Increasing is capability. That... I think that's what you missed from tier one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> so I've already done the four points. So let's you grab to Take a... the four more points. Yep. I now have 24 in my intellect pool. <laughs> nice. Cool. And uh, um... you... As an explorer, you get a bunch of stuff from going to tier three. Yeah. You're tier three already? Wow. Yes, yeah, so me, that, that's me digging tier three. <laughs> Bloodwin and Rettle have played in like 20 sessions, so. Yes, yeah, well, I think we're the, mo- we're the most played characters. Yeah. After this game, I've only got one more to get to tier three. So, yay. Cool. Um, which is better, the extra effort or the extra edge? Is he extra? Um, I mean, you need like you need more effort to. Uh, Edge is really good for like making special abilities cheaper or yep. free in some cases, uh, but effort is really good for just, I don't, just going screw it. I want through. I want, I want this to be really easy to do. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to up my edge in uh, in might to two. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm getting built in weaponry. Yeah, I... you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the t- I need to get the book up for what, what happens when you hit tier three. There's a few things I need to do, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll stick around for a bit and we can do tearing up with everybody. But we'll just have. I think, yeah, I think the, the final shot of the episode is Bloodwind saying that poem uh, yep. in the debrief room looking kind of haunted. <laughs> and. Um, we get the credits roll, and then for an after credit scene, I think we see um, like three or four smaller vessels heading towards the the crevasse uh, from the the risky business once it's ascended out of the ravine. 